Let me tell you about MPM. McAllister Precision Marketing. They can assist up and coming racers with career advancement, promotion, and assist in sponsorship procurement. MPM also has media and professional etiquette training. They work with premier driver development teams and limited late models to late models. And they also help the teams to make it up to the levels of KN, ARCA, Truck Series, and even NASCAR Xfinity. Contact Tanya McAllister today at McAllister Precision Marketing, 803 361 6199. Today, get on the board with MPM. CrateInsider.com is your one source for crate racing tech and more. Whether you currently race with a crate engine or you are thinking about getting into the sport, our website has what you need. CrateInsider.com has tech videos, interviews with experts, and the best products in the industry. Dyno tested and proven, so we know they are the best products for crate engines. Visit CrateInsider.com today to get on the fast track to victory lane. If you have not ordered at DirtCarLift.com in the motorsports racing world, you are absolutely way behind. But if you are an existing customer of the Dirt Car Lift product, you already know about why they use the concept of stop jacking and start lifting. DirtCarLift.com helps make things very easier in the pit area. Whether you need to change a flat tire, make a shock or spring adjustment, DirtCarLift.com can get all four sides up immediately than having to go around from side to side to car to car. By the way, they have a special package and price for existing customers with a few changes to make your life a little easier. Give them a call at DirtCarLift.com today. Call them up again at 770-898-3907. 770-898-3907. And find out why the concept is true to stop jacking and start lifting with DirtCarLift.com at the races today. This is Finish Line. This episode of is an exclusive production solely for the private, non-commercial use of our listening audience. Any publication, reproduction, transmission of the accounts without the express written consent or permission is restricted and prohibited. To hear this replay or other previous podcasts, download on iHeartRadio, iTunes Radio, and TuneIn. As always, this show is for you. Thank you for listening. is finish line undisputed unrealistic unscripted and unrehearsed this is finish line a weekly podcast talking about the positive and negative of motorsports asking the questions to drivers promoters and personalities getting the information and responses of the sport others dare not to ask or even discuss this is finish line this radio podcast is from the heart an in-depth analysis of everything in nascar nhra ihra indycar grassroots motorsports asphalt dirt drag racing cutting tractor pulling boat racing demolition derbies and much more from touring events to national regional weekly and more this is the podcast where the bull stops here whether it's asphalt dirt or drag racing or anything else in life there is always a finish line now he's a respected veteran broadcaster with over 20 plus years experience calling all forms of sports for public address tv and radio from nascar to the grassroots Please welcome your host, Wesley Outland. This is Finish Line. Good morning. Welcome to a historic day for our broadcast of Finish Line. This radio show has been going on for the last two and a half years minus four or five months because of the pandemic in 2020. But for the first time ever this morning, we are also, thanks to LSR TV Productions, doing the video 
of Finish Line. So not only is the radio show on the air, we are also doing video with guests on the show in video. You can see their reactions, their body language, mine as well. The, the interaction with video is so much different than what it is via a phone conversation. And I think this is just taking one thing to the next level. And of course, it would not be done possible without the folks at Rocket Media, Charles Wooten in the production chair, and as well as Jeff Stabnow. Uh, we thank you so much. Thank you to all of our Fox Sports Radio affiliates in the Carolinas. We'll mention them. Thank you to the sponsors along the way when it was radio to now, audio and video. Thanks to, of course, uh, DirtCarLift.com, CrateInsider.com, and MPM Marketing. I am your host, Wesley Outland. Welcome to the hot seat. It is finish line, hashtag finish line. And we want to make this show get bigger and bigger week in, week out. Share. If you care, you must share. I'm using the line that my friend Mark Duke always says. If you care, you must share. So share this show, share this link, hashtag finish line as always. And again, we thank you so much for joining us. We have got a great, great guest lineup to kick off the October 13th edition of Finish Line on our radio as well as on the video cast coverage. Thanks to LSR TV Productions. Man, we are not going to waste any time. I will let you know, normally we do this in radio. Um, I am a multitasker. So at time or two, I'll try to do my best to acknowledge the guests, talk to the guests, have camera one-on-one -on -one looking at you and the audience with the guests. But remember, uh, I'm also taking care of our social networks. So there will be a time or two when you start seeing me put my head down, and I'll try to do it really, really quickly. Um, I'm pretty good at multitasking. I've already posted what I needed to post uh, so people already know. And, uh, you know, along the way, you will see me going into my phone just to share on all of our social media networks. Not taking anything away from our guest lineup because you're on finish line. However, however, if, uh, you know, the event does happen where, you know, we decide that you want to listen to this guest and you don't really want to hear from the other one. Well, this is when we actually share everything to let you know who we've got on the program. And with that being said, we've got an awesome program for the October 13th finish line. Guess what's coming up this weekend? The Dirt World Champion at Portsmouth Raceway Park. We've also got NASCAR at Kansas. We've got the playoffs. We're going to talk about the Roval. Kevin Harvick versus, of course, Mr. Uh, Chase Elliott uh, is that feud over after Charlotte on Sunday? Is it only getting those questions and more we'll talk about as well uh, throughout the show? But we've got a lot of great guests lined up. So let's get it started today on the October 13th edition of Finish Line. A lady that was in Washington State, she now moved to the Southeast U.S., and the young lady, Brittany Zamore, will be our first guest on Finish Line this morning. Brittany Zamore joining us uh, from, again, Washington to Tennessee. Big winner, making history, making history, might I add, on last Saturday with the Pro Late Models at Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway on the road to the All-American 400. She picked up the win. Uh, Derek Griffith will be joining us also. Uh, the Speed 50 driver of the year. In addition to that, he won a race at Thompson, Connecticut. We'll talk to him. Deke McCaskill, winner of the 10,000 win. Cars Tour race at Wake County Speedway. Been two years since he won. He picked up the win at Wake County Speedway last Sunday afternoon. Burt Myers, the 2021 Smart Model Five Tour champion. He joins us. That's just our number one. You might want to reset that music loop again, Mr. Producer, because I'm not even done. Going into hour number two. The man that was the UMP Dirt Car Racing Hell Tour champion for like two years in a row. He just won another doubleheader weekend in Modifieds. The open wheel man we call the thrill. Originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Now from Mooresville, North Carolina. The elite chassis balls. That is, of course, Nick Hoffman. Nick Hoffman will be joining us. Zach Dome, the Dominator, finally winning the Butterball at Richmond, Kentucky over the weekend. 
the big $20,059 to win event uh, that was sanctioned by the Ultimate Heart of America series. And uh, that's a big race in the Bluegrass State. He picked up the win. We'll have him on the program. And finally, the closeout finish line this afternoon, this morning in hour number two, we will be talking to Bob Dillner, respected broadcaster and promoter of the Winchester Speedway. They don't race them anywhere in the world like they do at Winchester. And the race for the rifle is this Sunday, the 50th Lucas Oil Winchester 400, powered by Jags. Bob Tilner will talk about the history of that race. Lucas Oil, the Dirt Track World Championship, ARCA, BAB TV, and so much more. When we come back, it's Brittany Zamora on Finish Line. CrateInsider.com is your one source for crate racing tech and more. Whether you currently race with a crate engine or you are thinking about getting into the sport, our website has what you need. CrateInsider.com has tech videos, interviews with experts, and the best products in the industry. Dyno tested and proven, so we know they are the best products for crate engines. Visit CrateInsider.com today to get on the fast track to victory lane. The beautiful young lady originally from Washington State, now from Nashville, Tennessee, and she made history this past Saturday night at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway, winning in the Pro Late Models on the road to the All-American 400. Brittany Zamora joins us. Brittany, how you doing? Welcome to Finish Line. I'm good. How are you guys? Congratulations on your big win. Uh, before we go any further, I think this is the first time, Brittany, we've ever had you on Finish Line uh, in, in the years of this sh our radio sh show now slash video production. Let everybody know how you got your racing career started. And you're, you're a Washington State connoisseur. Now you've moved down to uh, the, the mid-Atlantic Southeast U.S., if you want to call it that, in Tennessee. Right. So I grew up in Washington State on the West Coast. I started racing when I was four years old. I've been doing it ever since, so 18 years, started in go-karts, went to mini stocks, late models, spent a year in K&N, and had a lot of fun out there on the West Coast, but I kind of wanted to venture out to the East Coast and see what it's all about out here. So it's been a lot of fun so far, and we've had some success with it, and hopefully we can keep it going. And a big win for you, obviously. I know a lot of people have been talking about it, but this win uh, makes the first female ever at Nashville Fairground Speedway. And you think about the history of Nashville, going back to the NASCAR days back in the 40s and the 50s, and you know, you making the history of being the only female to ever win a big race like that. Um, obviously, Willie Allen, Rackley Roofing, there are so many people that have helped you. We've had Willie Allen on finish line before remember he won the master of the pros uh, cra pro all-star event during the srx championship finale uh that they had back in july and we had him on earlier in the summer but uh, what does willie allen mean meant to you and your racing career taking you to another level Brittany? the rackley war team has been huge i've only raced with them in late models out here on the east coast and you know making that transition from coast to coast is it's never an easy one, I say. I've had a lot of, you know, strikeouts with sponsorship and also just finding the team that you really mesh with is important to me. So right. I want to make sure I go to the track and we have the same language. We understand what each other want from the race and what our goals are. And we just mesh really well. Like I did the two races with them last year, the Pro Late Model race, and then I did the Super portion of the 400 and we were successful. We showed speed. We were competitive. And so when I got a sponsorship to come do a late model race this time of the year, I knew what team I wanted to go to. It was obvious. So um, it worked out really well for us in our favor. So hopefully, um, you know, in the future, we can keep doing some late model races with them. Brittany, how do you feel moving into the road of the of the All American 400 uh, coming up at the end of the month of October, October 30th and 31st? Do you feel confident now with this win? Obviously, that man, I can go in here, I can compete with these guys. I got a chance to win at the All American 400. I got a shot as not only the the female of winning for the first time out, but also going for the guitar at the end of the month. Right. Yeah. The 400, I raced that last year. So 
going into a big weekend like that, it definitely helps having the experience. So you know what to expect. Um, I'm still looking for some sponsorship for that race. I don't have a secured ride yet. So I winning this past weekend will definitely help get that um, in the works. But this that's what I'm focusing on this week. I really want to go back. And like you said, I, I feel like I have a chance. I We did decent this past week. And if I can take what I learned from uh, the race on Saturday and apply it to any future races, then I know that going into the race, we'll be a little bit more confident about our abilities as a team or as a team and me as a driver. So that's definitely an opportunity I really look forward to. We're on finish line with Brittany Zamora. She picked up the win at Nashville, a young, beautiful lady out of Washington State, now residing from the volunteer state of Tennessee. And real quickly, talking about what you do in the racing industry uh pause for cause uh racing pause tell us about that how you got that started and, and how that's going for you you do a lot of stuff to help out adopted pets and, and get the word out to uh to help them find families right animals have a huge place in my heart i grew up with rescues my whole life and i wanted to kind of intertwine two of my top passions into one and i thought everybody in racing likes animals too so it's a perfect fit so I created Pit Road Pals last year, and I just like to intertwine that into my racing schedule. So every race I do, I have a shelter visit and feature a local shelter to that racetrack and just help, you know, advert, like give awareness for the animals and advocate for adoptions. And if I can help even just one animal get adopted, then that's something I am more than glad to do. And it's cool to see the support that the racing community has had for it. Brittany, where do you want to see your racing career go? I mean, do you want to make it up to NASCAR or are you content where you're running in the short tracks? Uh, you know, uh, and what was the reason behind coming from Washington, moving down to Tennessee? And I will tell you this. Um, I know at one time Washington State was kind of hurting with races, but it seems like in the last maybe last year or the last eight months, that place has been booming with a lot of big races in Washington State. Uh, I think of uh, y um, the Yakima track. I think of what happened at uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, the the race at Tri-City Raceway that just opened back up. That was a big show. Uh, props to, to the, you know, to the Pacific Northwest and, and bringing racing life back. But what made you decide to migrate and move down here to the to the south, to Tennessee? Yeah, I just wanted to be a lot closer to the racing scene out here. It's something I've, I grew up watching and have watched my entire racing career. And I got that experience out on the West Coast. And I just felt so far kind of out of the space over there. I did both of the tours out there. I had my success in it. And I really, I feel like the West Coast is underrated. There's some like tough competition out there. And a lot of people would be like, oh, they want to race out west. Like, they need to come out east and prove themselves or whatever. But the same drivers that went out west will come and went out east. So uh, I felt like, you know, we have that experience under our belt, and it's going to make me a better driver as I transition my racing career out here east. And that was one really cool thing about winning this past weekend is proving that, the, you know, the West Coast talent is capable of winning just, than just more out on the West Coast. So that was pretty cool. But I... Eventually, I want to be, you know, out here racing. Um, I, I want to race whatever I can. I'm not going to be picky. I'll make a career out of late model racing. I'd love <laughs> to make a career out of the Cup Series. Doing anything. I just want to be behind the wheel of a car and racing on the weekends. So any series that um, fits, you know, my schedule and my lifestyle, then I will um, definitely love to do. So, Brittany, uh, I've got one more question, and we'll let you go. We want you to thank your sponsors. We appreciate you being on Finish Line. Uh, coming up, we've got a, another great plethora of men that are on the lineup. Ladies first, we appreciate you joining us this morning on the October 13th edition of Finish Line, as well as for those that are watching, uh, some of the new things that are going on, thanks to uh, my man behind the scenes in Texas, Charles Wooten, working on the video production for Finish Line. And uh, we've got a lot of great ideas coming up. We talked about All-American 400. Bob Dillner will be joining us here on Finish Line shortly in the final segment to talk about the Winchester 400. 
And another big race is the Snowball Derby. Brittany, will we see you try to go down to Pensacola and make an attempt? And I think I heard the Snowflake 100 might be in the cards for you. That is definitely a race I'm looking at. So still working on some sponsorship for that, but it's definitely um, in the works, definitely working towards it. So if we can just secure that sponsorship, I'll be there. Well, Brittany, hey, listen, thank you so much for joining us on Finish Line. You are the first interview in video cast format mm -hmm. as well as in radio, and we appreciate you for all that you do in the racing industry. Before we do let you go, I know you want to thank Rackley War, but everybody else as well on the sponsors that put your car to victory lane at Nashville and continue success and good luck. Go get them. People sponsor this young lady. She is a talent for sure, and we want you to mention your sponsors uh, today on Finish Line, Brittany. Yeah, I want to thank Rackley War, Rackley Roofing, uh, my own program, Pit Road Pals, which really helped us get to the racetrack, um, the Davis Group, and every supporter that has helped me, you know, present and in the past. Brittany Zamore picking up the win at Nashville, making history as the first female winner of a big event in late models at the place in the Nashville Fairgrounds, of course, in Tennessee. And Brittany, we thank you for joining us this morning on Finish Line. Of course. Thank you for having me. And we'll be back with more Finish Line video and radio coverage when we return after our sponsor break. This is Finish Line. If you have not ordered at DirtCarLift.com in the motorsports racing world, you are absolutely way behind. But if you are an existing customer of the Dirt Car Lift product, you already know about why they use the concept of stop jacking and start lifting. DirtCarLift.com helps make things very easier in the pit area. Whether you need to change a flat tire, make a shock or spring adjustment, DirtCarLift.com can get all four sides up immediately than having to go around from side to side to car to car. By the way, they have a special package and price for existing customers with a few changes to make your life a little easier. Give them a call at DirtCarLift.com today. Call them up again at 770-898-3907. 770-898-3907. And find out why the concept is true to stop jacking and start lifting with DirtCarLift.com at the races today. Hey, welcome back to Finish Line. We welcome you again. Awesome interview there with Brittany Zamore. And, of course, we're going to go right back to our lines and get our another show started. Of course, great work by Charles Wooten, LSR TV Productions, taking Finish Line to another level. And uh, joining us now is our next guest, and he will be our second guest of the afternoon. Uh, that is my buddy from Hudson, New Hampshire, Derek Griffith. Derek, if you want to help me real quickly, buddy, turn your phone to the – Turn your phone to the side real quickly if you can do that. It'll make you bigger. And there you go. I think you're upside down. There we go. <laughs> How you doing, my friend? Good morning to you. And uh, I think we got him muted. Can we unmute him? There you go. <laughs> Derek, how you doing, buddy? Good morning to you. I'm good, Wesley. How are you? This is all, this is all new to us. This is all new to us with the video and the audio and everything, trying to make it work. But uh, you got to do your part to make yourself get sideways as well. But it's all good, man. Derek, uh, man, congratulations. I think this is the second time this year we've had you on finish line. You won a big race uh, not too long ago. Back in July, we had you on the program. And a big win tonight uh, uh, talking about this morning, uh, Thompson and that big race at Thompson, Connecticut. Talk about that big race and uh, getting so close to winning that pass North National Championship. Yeah, you know, we uh, we were really, really good. We uh, You get handicapped after you win a race with pass. Um, so we won uh, that icebreaker race and uh, at Thompson, ironically, earlier this year. Um, so we couldn't start any better than 10th. We won our heat race and started 12th. Um, and man, it just was a rocket ship. Uh, it took not much time to get to the lead and, and, uh, maintain it. Uh, we had a 
fend off some restarts there. Um, but you know, we had a fantastic car, uh, good day. I've never won a world series race, so, uh, it felt good to get there. We got a pretty cool glass trophy and stuff. So I was happy and, uh, hopefully carry a little bit of momentum to, uh, Seekonk and, uh, close up as a national champion again and, um, finish off that deal. You know, we, we've had you on before. And one of the things I want to talk about is you're so good in super late models. That is your, you know, your success in the G DG 12, but you've also dabbed into the modifieds a little bit. You got to run a modified at Thompson this past uh, weekend. What was that like? What was the experience like to go from running a, a fendered car to an open wheel car? There was a lot more power, obviously from a super to a modified, a lot than the handling, the chassis, the shocks, uh, different world. What was it like for Derek Griffith uh, racing those things on Sunday? It was pretty amazing. Um, we actually, we didn't get to race it at Thompson. We got to race it at Lee for Oktoberfest. Um, okay, so that was, okay. uh, it was, yeah, yep, it was close, but uh, one weekend off, um, we, we had two 40 lap features. We finished uh, eighth, the first feature and third, the second feature. Uh, we only had two eight lap practices. So I got to sit in a car I'd never been in before. Wow. We had to fix some uh, belt issues and all that. So um, it was good though. You know, I got a lot of experience and I think if everything goes right, we're going to be in one at Seekonk for the Haunted 100 there. So um, fingers crossed and hopefully we get to do that. You know, we're talking again with Derek Griffith and uh, Derek again picking up a big win. Thompson, you know, that's a race, honestly, Derek, that when you think of marquee races in the Northeast, you think of that race. You think of the World Series uh, at Thompson, Connecticut. And one of the big finales was the 300 lap modified race. You ran the past North National event. Obviously, you got to get ready for. Uh, the, the, the Milk Bowl at Thunder Road that's been rescheduled. There are so many things that are going on onto the road to the Snowball Derby for yourself because I know you'll be at Pensacola. Are you planning for Winchester this weekend? Where, where are we going to see you in the next couple of weeks? Um, yeah, we, you know, we, uh, really want to go to Winchester, good friends with Bob and it's like, Hey, you got to come down. You got to come down. We just couldn't make it work. Um, we we're going to get ready for Nashville. We're going to run the all American 400. Um, uh, but before that we do have Seekonk. So we close out our national, uh, points racing, gotcha. um, at uh, Seekonk for the haunted 100 and hopefully in a modified as well that weekend. And we'll be at Nashville and then we're going to be at the Derby for, I mean, uh, Pensacola for the Derby. Um, and, you know, we'll see where that takes us. Um, next year is kind of up in the air on what I'll do. Uh, you know, it's always a guarantee we're going to run some pass and uh, some, you know, uh, super late auto races. Uh, it's just we're not really quite sure what uh, what's the next step, um, if I can get to the next step. So we'll see. We'll uh, take it, play it by ear, and uh, take it as it comes. And by the way, uh, our guest panel is available for any questions. If you have on the broadcast, if you're watching, of course, on our uh, YouTube broadcast feed, thanks to LSR TV Productions, or if you're listening, uh, if you have any questions for our guest panel, uh, don't be afraid to pass them along. We'll, we'll, we'll send it as quickly as we can. Uh, of course, right now we're talking with Derek Griffith, uh, of course, uh, winner at Thompson, past championship. Uh, championship. Looks we'll to lock up that uh, national. Look title. at the uh, so, so much more going on, of course, uh, to decide who's going to win this championship. But Derek, real quickly, bud, uh, the the Pro All Star Series. What can you say the competition has been like in 2021, and uh, what it's been like for you to try to be on the cusp of winning this championship again? I think it would be your is your third title if you win it. Uh, yeah, second. Uh, it's going to be the second national title that we'll win. Um, it's it's been pretty difficult, you know. the The biggest thing that's hard about the national deal is going to be the racetracks that you go to. I mean, uh, you go to Thompson, you go to Hickory, you go the Oxford Two Hundred and Fifty is a national race. What a difficult race that, that is to finish good in. Um, uh, you know, you go to Thunder Road, you go to White. You go to, there, there's these racetracks that are um, pretty diverse. They're not just uh, hey. Uh, there's four racetracks that you're going to go do that. They're all the same thing. Um, I mean, everything's so different, so uh, so different from one another. And we've had such a strong year in the national races. So 
it's going to be really good for us to close it out, get another, uh, you know, championship under the belt. And um, I'm excited to uh, to close out. And competition level is pretty tough, just as, uh, you know, or for those Hickory Easter Bunny races, um, you know, they're all over the place. So it's, it's tough to uh, race with some people you don't normally race with um, that have such a, you know, high uh expectation to go out there and win you know nasty and i i think of what's coming up here this uh obviously weekend the winchester 400 we think of winchester we think of the all-american we think of snowball derby and we also think of of the oxford 250 which was a race that you were a part of and by the way i was rooting for you on that sunday night because <laughs> man damn it all you came so close to winning that thing uh the strategy the survival to make it uh into the finish of that race and then you settled for i believe a top five top ten finish but uh you know, what is it like for a young man like yourself and the breaks you've got? A lot of a lot of people might not know, but Derek Griffith has ran some ARCA races. He's ran the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. I believe it was at uh, at Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis. What were these opportunities like, having these chances? And uh, do we do you want to make it up the cup one day on Sunday afternoon? Yeah, I, I mean, I'd love to make it there. Um, it, it's my situation is a little bit different than a lot of the people we race against. So um, as I'm in my truck right now at my full-time job where I work every day, <laughs> it's uh, it's a little bit different than um, uh, the normal, you know, uh, uh, upcoming through NASCAR ranks and stuff. So um, I've been unbelievably lucky to get the opportunities that I have uh, already got. And, and um, I'm hopeful for next year. I had some really big things kind of stewing, and I'm not quite sure what's going to happen um, as of now. It doesn't seem like I'm going to get that big shot that I was hoping for for next year. But, you know, we'll we'll take it as we go. Um, you know, like I said, I've made so many good friends through racing and uh, met so many cool people, and um, hopefully one day someone says that they really like what I do and they want to see me run at a higher level. And uh, how can I get the sponsorship and the funding when I got the connects to move forward? It's just I'm waiting on that uh, that paycheck deal. So we'll. Derek, where do you see 2022 going for you, man? Are we going to see you expand more? Are we going to see you still run in the Northeast for a past championship? Or are we going to see you maybe travel and do a lot of more traveling for big, big money shows? Uh, Slinger, Winchester, All-American, Snowball. Has the time come for the young New Hampshire native to start traveling? And do you feel like you've got the package and the team and the family that can do that? Could could you hear me, Derek? Did you hear what I said, buddy? Yeah, for sure. So next out of our comfort zone a little bit. We headed to uh, Berlin, Jennerstown twice. There we go. All right. Uh, sorry, connection here isn't the best, but um, but yeah. So I mean, it's okay. I mean, we've we've been traveling a little bit here and there. We've gone to Berlin, Jennerstown, um, South Alabama Speedway. We went to Hickory, went all over. So we'll um, kind of wide open. We're going to a uh, big race and see where it's. Well, well listen, Derek, man, we're going to let you go. Uh, man, thank you so much for what you've done, uh, taking the time to be with us and uh, being a part of the finish line again for the second time this year. And I always tell you, you win. We'll have you on again. Uh, obviously, a big win. A final question, and then I want you to thank your sponsors. What does this, what what does the Thompson win mean to you? And is there another race that just sticks out there that is just so much more bigger besides the Snowball Derby? I want to take the Snowball Derby off the table because obviously I know that's the pinnacle for the Tom Dawson Trophy. But in your neck of the woods, uh, is Thompson a big win or is there another big race that you're going to go after to win one day? 
man, the Oxford 250 is pretty tough to beat as far as like northern races. Uh, but the ice break is a pretty big deal for us. You know, it's cool. I mean, there's probably 30 divisions there that weekend. Um, so you see a bunch of people you don't normally see. It's a lot of racing that you don't normally get to watch. So, um, you know, maybe something like this is the reason why I even got that modified ride was because someone saw me get, do good earlier this year or whatever. So it's definitely a big win for us. Um, and it's great to bring our sponsors to Victory Lane. Um, you know, we got Mike's Pies on board this year, FE Preventure Insurance, L Racing, Northeast Auto Imports, Tingsboro Motors. Um, you know, there's been so many people that have helped out this year. And uh, hopefully it uh, will continue on and we'll have uh, some more help for the Derby and have a good year. Hey, Derek. Let's let, let you thank your sponsors and let everybody know how they can follow hashtag DG12Nation on social media. We appreciate you being on finish line, my friend. Yeah, no problem. And uh, just want to thank my crew, uh, Dolly, Louie, my dad, uh, Emily, Cassidy. Um, we got Big Bill, uh, Big Jason, um, and the list could go on and on. And then all of our sponsors uh, were, uh, you know, listed just a second ago, but they're have been a huge help to um, like guys at uh, Preventure Insurance, um, LCM Racing, and Northeast Auto Imports, Things Row Motors, and uh, there's been so many more that have helped out over the years. And just want to thank everyone. It's been an awesome time racing, and hopefully we get to get some more marquee wins here. You're the man, Derek. Get back to work, buddy, and look forward to seeing you at a racetrack very, very soon, buddy. Thanks for being on finish line this morning. No problem. Thank you. DG12 from Hudson, New Hampshire, ladies and gentlemen. That is our buddy, Mr. This Derek Griffin. This is Finish Line. And that is Derek Griffith again on Finish Line. I forgot about the little thing that pops in there at the end of each uh, uh, each interview. But anyhow, uh, yeah, congratulations to Derek Griffith. Picked up the big win at Thompson, the World Series. Uh, good to see those modifieds and the late models back apart of the Thompson 300 weekend. He's also the 2021 uh, Speed 51. He was the 2021 Speed 51 draft champion winner driver of the year uh, of the short track draft he won that um and then of course uh you know looking for that second pass national championship a big big win for the young man out of hudson new hampshire we go from hudson new hampshire now to raleigh north carolina just up the road from the headquarters of our finish line studios uh, and joining us is my good friend, known for a long, long time. When I was young, announcer chasing the dream, he was racing late bottles back at Southern National, Wake County, just down the road about a mile from his shop. And after a two-year drought, his most recent win until Sunday was at Langley Speedway when he had to pass three cars from third to first on the last lap to win and then, of course, he won $10,000 in the Solid Rock Carriers Pure Year Tank Lines 175. Deke McCaskill, good morning. Welcome to Finish Line. Well, listen, congratulations to you before we go any further. Yeah, keep 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 your, keep your sideways there. You, 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 I keep telling people, there you go, because it, <laughs> it shows a bigger, bigger face of you there. So... Uh, Deke, before we go any further, man, how you been? How's the, how's the racing world been? We haven't catched up in a while, so it was really exciting to see you or to hear that you won the race on Sunday night at Wake County. Hey, first of all, can, can you hear me okay, Wesley? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, good deal, man. Um, appreciate it, man. That was a big win for us right here in our hometown, like you were mentioning earlier, and Ten thousand dollars on the line and a two-year drought. Um, a lot of fr uh, family and friends, and just a huge crowd there supporting us. So it was a it was a big day for us for sure. Wake County Speedway is such a unique racetrack. You you think of the quarter mile bull ring, or of course America's baddest bull ring that they use. Uh, it is a such a unique racetrack. I think of what Charlie Hansen, Mike Stoddard did before him. 
keeping that track alive, keeping the legacy alive. Uh, hell, I remember going to that track as a kid. My dad used to tell me about races on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when it was a dirt track back in the 60s and 70s to the early 80s. So much history. What does it mean to win with a historic track like Wake County Speedway, D? Oh, it's really special, man. Um, you know, a track where I started – that's where it all started for me at man back in the early nineties. Um, like you mentioned back when it was dirt, we used to go there as a little kid and, you know, take our bicycles and, and skateboards and whatnot and just, you know, play around after the races, just, just being kids, you know? And, um, I believe this was the richest purse in the track's history this past weekend. So that's really special to, to win it and on top of that. But, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of McCaskill, uh, tradition has been going on in Wake County, you know, that back in the, when I was a little kid, that was the thing to do on Friday nights was go to the track. And, and today, even my kids are, are going out there on Friday nights as well. So that's a um, pretty special uh, racetrack to us. Deke, the Cars Tour, obviously they are going to be announcing the 2022 schedule by the end of the week. I know they're also working on the tech rules. I know you're a late model stock competitor, but, but I do want to get your thoughts of what uh, Jack McNally the Cars Tour, uh, Danny Willard, Chris Ragel made the announcement last week that they're moving to pro late models instead of super late models on the Cars Tour. Uh, we got the Carolina Pro Late Model Series. We have freelance pro late model races. Too many roosters in the hen house? What's your thoughts of this? Uh, um, and, of course, uh, obviously not – in any disrespect to what Cars Tour has done, what they've done with the late model stock world, it just seems like it's been a damn struggle for super late models to survive. Why do you feel that is? Yeah, I know. That's a good question, man. I don't I don't know. The money, I feel like, is, is really good what Jack pays out, but um, it just seems like the Supers are just a little more popular, um, you know, south of us and, and maybe northeast of us, so I don't I don't know why he can't get the car count there. When he first started the tour, I thought it was you know pretty decent car count, um, you know, and he, he's went up on the purse a little bit as well. But um, I don't really have a good answer for it, man. Um, I think it was time for a change. Um, you look at this weekend's, you know, entry list. There's only eight supers there, but I know Winchester's going on as well, so I'm sure that's hurting him some. But but yeah, I guess he just felt like it was time for a change and maybe go the pro route and see what he can pull from there. So I, I feel like it's a lot. A cheaper way to go for them guys and you know who knows maybe he can average you know 15 you know 20 cars on pros and be a good deal for him Deke, do, do you feel and this is only in the competitor standpoint here but do you feel that obviously you mentioned it we've got winchester and 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 by the way, Winchester 400 has always been the third weekend in October. I mean, it always has been. I think there's been a time or two where maybe there was an ARCA Midwest uh, date with conflict and they moved it around or they had to compete on top of each other. But do you feel like that's one of the big problems and maybe why the Supers in the Southeast are struggling and even late model stock racing for that matter? You, you, you know, Doc Love said on his Race 22 radio show, he's a friend, I'll plug him, you know, you've got 40 late models in an area of three, four racetracks. You've got guys trying to run for a points championship. You've got guys trying to run for a touring championship. And then basically by the time you get to the middle of the summer, end of summer, August, Deke, either you're in the hunt for a championship or you're not, you're going to go elsewhere. And in doing so, you've split up the car count. You've split up even the tour car count. Uh, it's, it's like, we're, what, what, what can we do to fix this? Yeah. I think the first thing is just try not to schedule anything on top of each other. Um, that's the biggest thing you see a lot of tracks with the running on the same nights and, you know, different rule packages. Um, you know, if everybody could get together and come up with the same, you know, same tire, same rule, you got, you got certain tracks that have a two tire rule. You got certain tracks with four tire rule and, um, if they could all just come together, you know, as one, maybe that would help it out. But I mean, you got, you just got guys that are loyal to what they do. You know, I, I enjoy the cars tour and I've been with them for about six years now, ever since it started. And I, I just enjoy it. You know, I don't want to really want to do anything different. I really don't want to you know go to local tracks. I like the, I like the way the schedule is. I like the weekends off. So it's just, um, it just fits what I'm doing right now. You know, the best for me. 
and he has been running on the Cars Tour probably since its inception. The Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour has one more race in their 2021 calendar, and it is this Saturday night at Sobo, South Boston Speedway. Super late models and late model stocks. The championship is merely separated by one point, one point, between Bobby McCarty and Caden Honeycutt going into the finale at South Boston. The Super Late Models will also be there. And, of course, you can always watch it at Cars Tour TV. We're here with Deke McCaskill. Deke winning the Pure Year Truck Lines 175 at Wake County. Deke, what was it like racing Wake County daytime on a track where normally we're a Friday night track? Normally, you're racing yeah. <laughs> under the lights at Wake County. What was it like racing at 5 o'clock in the partly cloudy, not sunny conditions at Wake County Sunday? Yeah, it was. It wasn't bad, man. It was. Um, I was really looking forward to to running nighttime and see what uh, you know Charlie had putting up the new lighting system. So I was kind of excited to see how how well lit the place was because back in the day it was a pretty dark hole. And uh, but yeah, that was oh, very yeah. unique so, racing yes. in the day. Uh, that was very unique racing in the in the daytime, and I don't think I've ever raced in the daytime before at that track as well. So it just, uh, you know, it reminded me of running the supers back in the early two thousands. Um, you know, just a lot of horsepower and not a lot of grip. That's kind of how it was this past Sunday. Just all about, really, all about throttle control. got a few more minutes with Dick McCaskill. Burt Myers is joining us next, and he'll wrap up hour number one and finish line. We'll go right into hour number two with Nick Hoffman, as well as uh, Zach Dome and Bob Dillner to talk about the Winchester 400 and the Dirt Track World Championship as well. But we're talking with Raleigh, North Carolina's Dick McCaskill right now. Dick. What is it like, uh, obviously, the competition on the Cars Tour? It's been a two-year drought for you until Sunday afternoon. Uh, what's your take of the drivers that you normally race in week in, week out, on the road, on the Cars Tour, uh, in search for a championship? Oh, man, it's um, by far the most competitive uh, thing I've ever been a part of this past couple of years. It's, um, you know, when the Tour first started, it was um, – you know, you could have an off weekend and run top five. And now it's, if you have an off weekend, you're lucky to get in the top 10. Um, you look at qualifying times every weekend, you know, a 10th is separated by, you know, 11 or 12 cars. So it's um, by far the most competitive thing I've been a part of. And, and I like it. And I like racing against competition like that. Um, you know, you mentioned a two year drought. I probably could have went somewhere local around here and, and had a better shot at winning, but, you know, I've always enjoyed running against a lot of competition like this, and it just makes that win more special, knowing that you've beaten some of the best out there. And hopefully, we can do it again this weekend. Looking forward to getting to South Boston. That's another uh, track we've been really good at. So hopefully, we can um, um, get two in a row um, coming off this two-year drought. That'd be pretty pretty cool. <laughs> And South Boston is a very unique racetrack in itself. Three-tenths of a mile. The NASCAR Bush Series and the Truck Series used to race there back in the day. And, and that is the finale. And, of course, that is also uh, the send-off to Kathy Rice and a fantastic 30-year career of being a general manager at South Boston Speedway. She's turning the reins over to somebody else. She's just been an awesome uh, ambassador for short track racing as well as NASCAR routes. And uh, we might need to get uh, Kathy Rice on finish line maybe to get her thoughts on her career as she is truly one of the best. There are just so many people that are involved in the fabric of motorsports, whether it's dirt, pavement, pavement, drag racing, touring weekly. And speaking of a weekly track, Deke McCaskill, I want to get your thoughts on it. They announced the other week ago, bringing back the Thanksgiving Classic at Southern National Motorsports Park, the High Banks in Kinley, a track you know very, very well on the – touring winning level and the weekly late model stock level of winning championships. Also your thoughts are going back to Kinley on Thanksgiving. Yeah, I know it's um, kind of cool. Mike was able to, you know, get that deal back together and bring that track, um, bring that tradition back really, you know, um, Thanksgiving weekend is something we'd always look forward to was, um, you know, eating Turkey and then going down here and racing. So, uh, you know, just kind of waiting to see what, what kind of purse he's going to pay and his, um, you know, what kind of tire is going to run. There's still a lot of things that need to, um, to need to find out more about. And, you know, the tire shortage has definitely been a, um, 
been an issue this year. So hopefully he can get everything worked out and um, we can get down there and see what, see what we got. Another race also coming up. Goodyear All-American Speedway. You're going to make the trip down to Jacksonville for the Invitational event on uh, Sunday, November the 14th. 15000 to win. Or 10000 yeah, to win, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. for, the, uh, for the late models. And then, yes, go ahead. Yeah, we're thinking about it. He came up and talked to us at Florence and um, seemed like a really nice guy. Seemed like he's really, really willing to make things work down there. He's got a lot of improvements to the track. The track looks really good some, from the videos I've seen. And, um, you know, we're thinking about it. We're just kind of week by week right now. We're going to get through South Boston and see what kind of, um, you know, where we can go after that. But, yeah, that's definitely one of the um, weekends we're looking at. Well, Deke, first off, Thank you for being on Finish Line. Secondly, my CRN broadcast colleague, Bruce Barrett, says hi, as always. And thirdly, <laughs> please thank your sponsors. Congratulations on your win at Wake County on Friday, Saturday, uh, Sunday. I was just going right through the days. Friday, yeah. Saturday, <laughs> Sunday afternoon, yeah. buddy. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, Bruce was just about here a little while ago and um, spoke to me. But, yeah, just can't thank, um, you know, per your tank lines and h and logging, uh, Wayland Geospatial. Uh, RNS Race Cars, uh, RNS Performance, Graphics Unlimited, Mail Technicians, and uh, Bobby Gregory Weldon, and everybody on the crew, man. Um, appreciate everybody's help, my dad and all his support, and my wife and kids. Um, they're probably some of my biggest fans, but uh, it was a little special day for us for sure, man. Probably one of my biggest wins I've ever had, but um, just uh, really good back. It feels good to be back in victory lane for sure. All right, buddy. Well, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. And uh, go get them at Sobo on Saturday for the final Cars Tour race of the season. Yes, sir, man. Appreciate it, bud. That is Deke McCaskill out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Again, the winner for the Cars Tour at Wake County Speedway on Sunday afternoon in the Pure Year Tank Lines 175. This is Finish Line. And we welcome you back to Finish Line for those that are listening on our Fox Sports Radio affiliates in the Carolinas, on iHeart Radio Sports, as well as on the Community Radio Network. I am your host, Wesley Outland. Thank you so much for joining us. We've already had some awesome guests. We're going to keep on going. And joining us now is our next guest, the 2021 Smart Modified Tour Champion. And that was a race that came down to the wire between three drivers. And my good friend out of Walnut Cove, North Carolina, is reigned. He's won the championship. And that is my buddy, Burt, the Ace Myers, the ace of the Smart Modified Tour. Burt, welcome to Finish Line, man. We gotta work, we gotta work on getting your getting your uh okay, I'm understanding he's good now. Charles, you gotta work on that from now on, but uh, this is our first time doing video, Bert, but uh Man, I love the modified car okay? in the background, all the trophies, all the checks. Yes, sir. The trophies, the checks, all the swag, so many cool things. What did it mean to you winning the Smart Modified Tour first championship after running a couple of races last year, but running a full tour, reaching the finish line this year? Well, you know, this is a, this is a championship that I put on my radar at the beginning of the year, even last year, whenever the, the Smart Series started back up. You know, I was around the old days with the old Smart Series. So to be able to be a part of the rejuvenated series and and um, be able to capture this championship is something that we really, like I said, I put it on my bullseye. So uh, to be able to capture it this year, it's really special to me and my family and my team. Burt Myers again joining us. He has been on finish line before talking about race wins at Bowman Gray Stadium and, of course, uh, running up in the Northeast, uh, running Seekonk, running one-off races up, and of course, where Derek Griffith and uh, Matt Hirschman and all those guys are based out of. And, of course, he won the championship the drivers that you had to battle, uh, John Smith, I know he put up a fight. Uh, there was just such great competition. Bobby Labonte down the stretch, three wins in a row. Uh, just talk about just the, 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 the car count was great. I, I got to give props to Chris Williams, J.B. Cole, Eric Brennan, everybody on the Smart Modified Tour, Burt, because first off, 
You were able to run the madhouse. You were able to do your deal at Bowman Gray Stadium. I know the season started a little bit later because of the pandemic and getting the restrictions to be lifted to come back and run, and you only had a short two, three-month span of racing. But we, I, I like the fact that you guys got to run the Bowman Gray Modified Championship race there, and then there were so many other weeks available to run the Smart Modified Tour and obviously, do you feel like this is what's increased the car count because of doing that? Absolutely. Um, hands down, I think that Chris Williams understood that that Bowman Gray was the honey hole, that Bowman Gray is, is where you had to draw cars from. So I think his vision was that it had, had to be, the schedule had to be around Bowman Gray Stadium. Um, the rule packages and the, and the different procedures and the things that Chris came up with um, allowed for Bowman Gray cars to come run the smart series. So, um, you know, it's a catch 22 because Bowman Gray is Bowman Gray is what's kept Southern modifieds alive. But at the same time, Bowman Gray has kept Southern modifieds from growing outside of Bowman Gray. So, you know, right. As a whole, as a Southern Modified group, we all understand that Bowman Gray takes priority. So that's why the schedule is based around Bowman Gray Stadium, and it allows people like me, you know, to do both. Bert Myers, again, joining us here on Finish Line. You can follow him on uh, all of the social media outlets on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. He's got you covered. He'll throw that out there uh, on his uh, thanking sponsors on the segment. Bert, I want to go back to Bowman Gray Stadium. And, of course, uh, racing at the Madhouse on a weekly basis, quarter mile bull ring on a football field. We just had Dick McCaskill on there talking about racing around Wake County Speedway. And, honestly, Wake County Speedway is the perfect description of what could be the size of you know, Bowman Gray Stadium without the exception of the football field there. Uh, but a lot of people might not realize or they didn't know, but Bowman Gray Stadium is – the official football field for college at Winston-Salem State University. So they have to finish before the start of football season, which is normally around mid-August because they got to go through training and practices and everything else. That's why I've always had people say, well, why don't Bowman Gray do a one-off race? Why don't they race in October? Why don't they run in November? That's the reason why. They've got a, right. a set schedule. It's always been that way. And honestly, Bert, I like it. Maybe we're racing too damn much. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the older you get, uh, you kind of start feeling that way. When I was in my my 20s and 30s, you know, I, if there was an off weekend, I was looking for somewhere to go race. Um, but, you know, you, you, life happens. And so uh, with kids and, and schedules and vacations and all the different things going on, uh, I, I'm really happy with, with the fact that we can run a full season at Bowman Gray that starts in April and ends in August and that we can run, you know, 12, 13 races on the Smart Series before and after that. Um, I like the schedule, yeah. I, like you said, I think that um, if – if I can remember at one time we were running 50, 60, 70 races a year, and uh, and I loved every minute of it. And, and to this day, still, I'm looking for stuff to do. I had a phone call last night. I can't tell you a whole lot about it, but it's a good chance I'm going to be running at a, at a local track right up the road from me that is out of my comfort zone. Uh, that is that that may be happening here pretty soon, but um, we love it. You know what? This is not a life. I mean, a hobby for us. It's a lifestyle. This is what we do. Um, it's just there is no stop. There is no quit. We're always looking for somewhere to go race. But it's a good. I think it's a good match. It's a good marriage between Bowman Gray and the Smart Tour to work together or to work around Bowman Gray schedule so that people can race quite a bit but at the same time enjoy spending time with their family too. Bird, if there's, besides the championship at Hickory Saturday night, if there's one race that stands out this year, or, or is there a track that you enjoy running at on the Smart Tour, what track would that be? And uh, segue to that, what track do you think we should run the Smart Modifieds at that are not on the schedule yet? Um, I think that, it's listen i told somebody this this is really funny I, I told the guy in front of his wife at my son's soccer game and she kind of looked at me funny when i said it um racetracks are like women okay 
even though there's a lot of similarities, <laughs> they're all different. And so you like, you like different things about one that you don't like about the other. And, and then vice versa, there's things that you, um, it, it, well, you get what I'm saying, but basically, uh, I love running, you know, this, this year we went to dominion for the first time dominion and, and uh, Steve Britt and those people up there is awesome people, awesome facility, awesome racetrack. You can just, you can just drive it hard all night long. And in the South, we don't get a lot of that because you go to somewhere like Hickory where you have to kind of take care of your stuff all night long to make sure that you've sure. got tires left at the end where when you go to dominion, when we went to Hickory, I mean, excuse me, to uh, South Boston, when we went to um, to Motor Mile, you can kind of hustle the car all night long. So I enjoy stepping out of that, uh, what we call riding around uh, the, to save tires in the South. I enjoy stepping out of that sometimes and getting to do that. Um, but I like them all. You know, there's every track has its own unique um it's they're just there's quirky you know what i mean there, there's certain things that you like about every track and then there's certain things that you that you may not care about but it, there's still a challenge and you still go in with an open mind and, and and your goal is to win when you go um as far as what tracks i'd like to see i may be over <laughs> i may be um stepping out <laughs> and, and going further than expectations are allowed but you know martinsville uh, richmond some of those tracks that are modified race tracks uh you know i don't see why um, I don't see why we can't have a smart modified race at one of those tracks, but, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I'd like to go back to Langley. I'd like to see Tri-County, Orange County, you know, just the tracks that we grew up with here in the South, um, that with, back in the old smart days and even the Southern Whaler modified tour. So, um, I think you're going to see some, I think everybody's going to be pleasantly surprised when the schedule comes out just from the, the racing buzz that we're hearing, uh, around the smart modified series and, and how hard Chris Williams is working as far as sponsors and, and races and schedules and stuff like that, I think uh, everybody's going to be pleasantly surprised next year. And Bert, uh, to add a segue to that, uh, do, do you feel, you mentioned Martinsville, you mentioned Richmond, and by the way, they had just had the return of modifieds at Martinsville, uh, back at Richmond as well, uh, and, and they're NASCAR sanctioned. But do you feel the packages that the Smart Modified Tour, the NASCAR Will and Modified Tour, and, and, I, and I use this as an ex example of the Valley Star Credit Union 300. You had NASCAR officials, but you also had Cars Tour officials officiating and operating the, Na the big NASCAR late model race uh, back a few weeks ago. Do you think the time has come for NASCAR and the smart guys to maybe be an olive branch and work together for a couple of races. And do you think it would work out doing it that way? Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, you know, the, 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 the goal, the main goal for NASCAR, for smart, uh, for tri track up North, uh, for, for ROC, all anybody that's, that is modified yeah. based. Uh, the goal is to put on great modified shows with great car counts, with good purses, with, with the, you know, stands full, that's the goal. So, uh, I, I don't know, I don't know how exactly that would work, <laughs> but I would sure like to see something happen to where everybody could kind of come together for a great, you know, the same purpose, a great cause and, and, um, and go do those shows. I love running the NASCAR shows. You know, I was able to, to go do, uh, Richmond and Dave Sapienza's car. I was really heartbroken. I didn't get to do Martinsville. Um, the year that I had, was probably the worst year I've ever had. So to be able to be here on your show and talking about winning the smart championship is a blessing in itself because I tore up more this year and had more things go wrong this year than I ever <laughs> have. So uh, we started out the year by destroying a car at New Smyrna and that kind of got us behind the eight ball and uh, financially, physically, mentally, uh, it just, it just got us set back and then things just kept happening and kept happening. So, uh, it wasn't the year that we hoped for, but like you said, you always find the silver lining and, and, uh, the fact that I was able to still come home with this championship is, uh, is, it was a blessing. And by the way, uh, speaking of the world series of asphalt short track racing at new Smyrna, I was down there with speed 51 TV a couple of times last year or this year, actually, they successfully ran Bert 12 nights of racing. How grueling Whew. is that? 
that's like the hell tour for pavement racing, right? I mean, we got the hell tour <laughs> champion, Nick Hoffman coming up next. That's like the hell tour for, for pavement guys on modifieds, super late models. I know uh, Derek Griffith, who was on earlier, he won the championship. You ran the modifieds. I think Matt Hurstman won that title. Uh, Ryan Priest was there. What's it like running 12 straight nights in Florida? Well, I only got to run three. But <laughs> okay, <laughs> our plan was to run the whole week. Um, uh, Wednesday night, I, I just knocked the front clip off, and uh, we we got had Plans to watch changed, the last right? two nights. But I'm gonna tell you something. Though it's 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 not so much um, it's not so much about the money, and it's not so much about uh, get knowing how to get around New Smyrna. What we learned is is it's it's about the guys that have been going there year after year after year. And when we got down there, we were pretty good in practice. And then the race starts, and it's a whole different race car. And we got to noticing that the, the Hirschmans and a lot of those guys that go down there every single year, they don't really run any practice. And it's because they know that it's going to be a big change from daytime to nighttime. And that's just stuff that we weren't familiar right. with because we hadn't been going. But um, it's an experience. And, and we knew that it was going to be an uphill battle for us just because we haven't been going. Um, we, we, we came up with enough sponsorship and we, we, we did it sens sensibly to where we knew that um, this money was allotted to go do New Smyrna. We went down and our, me and my guys, we all got a big house. We stayed on the beach and we just kind of made a, a, a team trip out of it. Um, so we, we had a great time. We really did have a good time, but uh, the, the week didn't turn out like we wanted. But I can't imagine going down there and running 12 nights straight. And, you know, you listen, it's, it's pretty cool to listen to the old guys that talk about, you know, working on the car in the parking lot at the hotel and, and coming back. Sure. And you, a lot of guys think of it as a vacation. And uh, one guy was telling me, he said, you know, my guy said, oh, cool. Yeah, we're going to Florida. This will be fun. And he said, when we got home, they realized it's not a vacation. So um, it was, you know, we, of course, we we wish we hadn't uh, wrecked out and tore a race car all to pieces. But at the same time, Thursday night, we went over to the big track and we got to watch the qualifying races. And then Friday, we came back and sat in the stands and watched the, the, the Richie Evans race. So it turned into a vacation, not that we wanted it to, but that's what it turned into. Well, Bert, it's always great talking with you, man. I'd give you a double segment if I could because you're just awesome to chat with. But congratulations on your 2021 Smart Modified Tour Championship. Now, by the way, it was announced last night that the Smart Modified Tour will not be running at Florence, part of the South Carolina 400. However, their finale is coming up in 10 days at Ace Speedway in Altamaha, North Carolina. I know that's another awesome track in your stomping grounds that you've won at many, many times. Thank you for being on Finish Line. Congratulations on the championship. And as always, let everybody know how they can follow you on social media and thank your sponsors. Yeah, man, you can uh, follow me on Facebook and uh, it relates over to Twitter. Uh, as you can see behind, I've been, man, I've been working really hard here. I keep moving around enough to where I'm trying to get my sponsors in the back. You liked that, didn't you, Wesley? I've been I moving like around that. enough it's to awesome. kind of get my sponsor. That's a cool, I gotta that's pay a cool the bills. ass that's setup. That's awesome the right there. So, that's right. Uh, but as you can that's see behind fair. me, uh, Citrus A, Fury, uh, Green Construction Management, um, Backyard Leisure, John at Cleanup Supply, Haviland Express Lube, uh, Foxfire Towing, Dave Sapienza is, is a big part of our program. Philip Smith is, is still a part of our program. Bubba Speed Shop. Um, just, just, man, I, we could go on. You, you don't have enough time for me to thank enough people that I, have helped. I, I kind of want you to, I kind of want you, Bert, to stand up, flip your phone around, change the screen <laughs> to the front screen and give us a tour of your race car on finish line. All right. Ride hold on. Let me, air. let me see if I can, you, uh, you, let me see if can I can do, do this. this. Come on. on. I don't know how to flip it. How do I flip it? Technical. Stabbing. I tell you what, you I'll, just, button, I'll just, I'll just, uh, little circle. I don't see the circle. <laughs> I don't know what I've done here. I'll just, all right, look, here we go. Hey, that'll work. That'll work. Look at that. This is inside the shop of Bert the Ace Myers. Look at, there's the refrigerator. Hey, I'm hungry. Where's the chicken? Look at the race cars. Yeah. Jason Myers modified. <laughs> the tires, the we, trophies, listen, the checks. There, there's, um, you know, like I said, there, there's so many people we could thank that, um, you know, it's like I said Saturday night when I won the championship. I'm the one that's fortunate enough to be sitting here doing this this show with you, and my name's on the roof. But um, 
Yeah. It, it, this is a family effort. This is a team effort. You know, the guys that help us do it at, a, at the expense of a pit pass. They, they, they give up time with their families, um, you know, to, to come and follow me around so we can go racing. But I hope that uh, they get the same enjoyment out of it as I do. It's, it's something that, uh, you know, they say it's in your blood. And uh, I think we're proof of that, that, you know, our family has been doing this since 1950. So um, we've got some kids coming up that might keep it going for us. We'll see. Yeah. But thank you guys for having us on. Listen, th th this helps, you know, for you to, to have a show and to put us, put us on the, on a pedestal and uh, let us be able to plug our sponsors and, and, you know, show the world what we're doing. You know, I, I'm a firm believer and I know I'm welcome. biased, but uh, modifieds are the best racing out there. And if you, if you've never seen one, you better make a point to come see one next year. North South shootout and uh, all those other good events coming up on the way. Burt Myers, thank you, buddy. Congratulations, champion, for being on. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's Burt Myers here, the 2021 Smart Modified Tour champion, joining us here on Finish Line. This is Finish Line. And we welcome you back to the program. We are moving into our number two. But first, we have to thank some of our sponsors when we return. It is going to be Nick Hoffman next. Nick, Zach Dome, Bob Dillner, all in our number two after we thank our sponsors of Finish Line. Let me tell you about MPM. McAllister Precision Marketing. They can assist up-and-coming racers with career advancement, promotion, and assist in sponsorship procurement. MPM also has media and professional etiquette training. They work with premier driver development teams and limited late models to late models. And they also help the teams to make it up to the levels of K&N, ARCA, Truck Series, and even NASCAR Xfinity. Contact Tanya McAllister today at McAllister Precision Marketing, 803-361-6199. Today, get on the board with MPM. CrateInsider.com is your one source for crate racing tech and more. Whether you currently race with a crate engine or you are thinking about getting into the sport, our website has what you need. CrateInsider.com has tech videos, interviews with experts, and the best products in the industry. Dino tested and proven, so we know they are the best products for crate engines. Visit CrateInsider.com today to get on the fast track to victory lane. If you have not ordered at DirtCarLift.com in the motorsports racing world, you are absolutely way behind. But if you are an existing customer of the Dirt Car Lift product, you already know about why they use the concept of stop jacking and start lifting. DirtCarLift.com helps make things very easier in the pit area. Whether you need to change a flat tire, make a shock or spring adjustment, DirtCarLift.com can get all four sides up immediately than having to go around from side to side to car to car. By the way, they have a special package and price for existing customers with a few changes to make your life a little easier. Give them a call at DirtCarLift.com today. Call them up again at 770-898-3907. 770-898-3907 and find out why the concept is true to stop jacking and start lifting with DirtCarLift.com at the races today. Welcome back to Finish Line. Our number one is in the books. We want to thank the guests in our number one, including Brittany Zamora, Derek Griffith, Dick McCaskill, and Burt Myers. Just a moment ago, always enjoy cutting up with the ace, the 2021 Smart Modified Tour Champion. Now we go from talking about pavement modifieds to dirt modifieds. And the Balsam Elite chassis is joining us. He's also a multi-time Hell Tour UMP Dirt Car Modified Champion. He won some big modified races over the weekend. To Mooresville, North Carolina, we go to. And Nick the Thrill Hoffman is on finish line. Welcome, Nick. Turn your, turn your, turn your camera there a little bit. There you <laughs> go. I like this. Kind of like, kind of giving you direction here. So Nick Hoffman yeah. is in the hot seat on finish line. That's not a touchdown, Nick. That's just kind of fix your fix your camera there. So, but you're good to go now. How, man. Are, how you, you doing? Are you in your race hall? Good. How are you? Yeah, I was figuring this is probably the quietest I'm place. I'm well. uh, The guys are in the shop working. 
Well, we just had Burt Myers in the race shop showing off his pavement modified car. Now we got the thrill Nick Hoffman in his race hauler for sure. Where are you going to this weekend, man? Uh, we'll go to the Dirt Track World Championship tomorrow at Portsmouth, uh, Thursday and Friday with the modified, and then uh, try and find somewhere to go Saturday here. Uh, I haven't really looked at the schedule, but since they moved the program to Thursday and Friday for the modifieds for us, it kind of allows us to go somewhere Saturday, so we'll uh, try and make the best of that. And again, speaking of the uh, the Dirt Track World Championship, uh, I believe it's the 50th Dirt Track World Championship coming up this weekend at uh, at the uh, Portsmouth Raceway Port Park in Ohio. Bob Dillner will be our final guest here on Finish Line. He'll talk about uh, that race, of course, uh, for Lucas Oil and so much more, as well as the 50th Winchester 400 in Indiana as well. Nick Hoffman. Nick, uh and just talk about the 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 season you've had, man. I mean, last year was great. This year has been even better. It seems like anywhere that elite number two modified unloads, look out, you're coming to take the money. Whether it's in Kentucky, the yeah. Midwest, the Northwest, the Midwest, Southeast, you literally can race on all different types of racing surfaces. And normally when you're in the pitch, you're going to win. Yeah, our stuff's been really good this year. It's been good the last couple of years. And uh, last year, I was fortunate enough to run for the Allgaier family and run their car and win the national championship with that and then uh, run my stuff this year and do the same thing. And obviously had a dominant held tour and, and everything we've done this year, we've we seem to end up in victory lane. So uh, it's been really fun. Uh, I told her it up the other day. I was at 36 wins in 11 different states um, at somewhere around 30 different racetracks. So that's my biggest thing is I want to be known as a guy that can travel anywhere and, and win in, in any circumstance. So uh, any track condition. So that's kind of what we focus on the last couple of years and we've been able to do it. And uh, yeah, I've just been having a blast. Obviously I was able to run the late model again last night, run really well at, at 411 in, in Scott's car. And uh, it's been the best opportunity I've ever had. So I'm pumped up to keep that going. So many opportunities for you. And by the way, you speak of uh, the race last night at 411. Uh, the Newport Nightmare, Jimmy Owens, won that championship, uh, won that race in the uh, Castro Night in America on Flow Sports uh, last evening at uh, Seymour, Tennessee. And, that, and that's a race that was scheduled back in March or April. Then it got postponed to October, to September, rained out again, and then moved to October uh, last night. They knocked it out of the park. Uh, Twenty thousand dollar to win in the super late models. The modifieds, I think, paid fifteen hundred to win. And of course, uh, you also ran the Ironman modified series and picked up some wins over the weekend as well. Um, you know, how do you? How do you pick and choose, Nick, what races you run at? Obviously, there's been years past that you've been committed to a tour, if you will. I think of the Renegades of Dirt Modified Tour. I think of the Dirt Cup Challenge. Uh, but yeah, And obviously, you've not ran a full commitment with those guys. They've got the race for the kids coming up this weekend but uh, at County Line Raceway. But and, and it's a race you've won as well before. How do you, how do you as a race team, pick and choose where you want to go to race at and where, where you know based going near or far staying home going local traveling uh two or three days on the road how do you decide how you want to do it yeah for sure it just really depends on what makes the most sense as far as money i'm trying to do this for a living obviously i got my chassis business that does pretty well but uh you know to try and race for a living run up and down the road just whatever makes the most sense um last week i didn't really have anything going on so uh, never been to Boyd's before and uh, kind of wanted to check it out. So uh, they paid 1200 and 3000 So it made sense to go out there and run and was able to win both of those. And then um, and then this coming weekend, I could stay closer to home and, and go to County Line. But uh, I've never won the Dirt Track World Championship in my modified before. And I've won County Line a couple of times. So it's just one of those deals. I'd, I'd like to get that check to hang on the wall. And, um, you know, I know there will be probably more cars at Portsmouth this weekend. And um, so I just... I try and chase competition and, and try and chase um, as many cars to race against. So um, that's my biggest thing. Like this weekend, I'm just going there just to try and get that check to hang on the wall. That's the biggest thing. Nick Hoffman again joining us, uh, the Hell Tour. We were cutting up with Burt Myers early and talking about being a pavement guy running 12 nights at, the, uh, at New Smyrna in February. You guys run 10 nights uh, at, at Volusia. 
five, six nights at Lucas Oil at East Bay. And then you got the Hell Tour. I think, what was it, 36 races in 43 days this yeah. year? Something like yeah, that. I mean, a, holy cow. Yeah, it was a little bit more spread out this year, which kind of sucked. You know, like once for a guy like me coming from North Carolina, I want to get on the road and, and kind of just knock these races out. You know, the off days are actually the worst days of – um, you end up spending more money, you end up in the bar drinking at night and, uh, you know, and then we ended up at a couple different Cardinals games and Cubs games and everything else. So you end up spending way more money on the, uh, on the off days than you do racing. So the, the whole old schedule of 28 races in 32 days is I feel like what we need to go back to, um, this deal this year was, was good. I mean, I was able to stay on the road for a while, but I was having to try and pick and choose other races in other areas to try and go run and fulfill those off days um just because we had so many of them i think we were on the road for almost three months total um and never came back home so that makes it tough with running a business and obviously having a family when does nick hoffman go full-time into super late model racing i know you've dabbed into it a time or two you've run the big races at charlotte and eldora and other big events when does nick hoffman take elite still continue the modified business, but also go to super late models full time. Yeah. It's just really just waiting on the phone call for the right opportunity. You know, I feel like I've done everything I can do to prove myself that, uh, I can do this deal or that I want to do this deal and do it full time. But, um, this opportunity I have right now with Scott is the best I've ever had. And we're running really well every single night. And, uh, last night to run third against, you know, Jonathan Davenport and Jimmy Owens, um, had a lot of pretty tough hitters there. And, uh, we were really good, went quite a quick time and, and won our heat race. So uh, just the biggest thing is just finding the right opportunity that makes sense for me to, I want to race, you know, 80 to 100 times a year. Um, this year, I'll be pretty close to 100 races when it's all said and done and um, running some midget races and kind of dabbling into everything. But um, as far as late miles, that's where I want to be full time. I still want to run my modified 20 or 30 nights whenever I can and um, kind of anything and everything. But um, you know, I'm working on some stuff for next year. I don't know where it's going to land me, but, uh, you know, worst comes to worst. I always got my modified that, that rolls around the racetrack pretty well. And, uh, my, my business, it's running good. So, um, as far as a race car driver, I want to do a full-time late model deal. It's just, uh, everything's got to fall in place. Nick, any, any desire to want to get into pavement racing or, or intent being on the dirt? Yeah, I mean, I, I would race anything, really, but uh, I think we've all kind of seen which direction the pavement side is headed, you know, as far as if you ain't got the, you know, the money to do it and do it at the top level, then you're not going to make it. So, um, you know, I, I did some of that growing up when I moved here to North Carolina. I did a lot of Bandoleros, Legend Cars, Asphalt late Models, um, and then ran three truck races when I was 18. So I did a lot of asphalt racing, um, grew up around dirt racing. This is where I made my home and my living. So um, I, I really enjoy doing what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm able to kind of race for a living and then um, still got something to fall back on with the, the chassis business. It's going really well. Um, last, week, last week at Boyd's, I had eight cars in the feature the other night and we had eight of the top nine finishers. So um, it's pretty impressive for us. And I got guys all over the country that are running really well. Um, and I'm you know really happy for that. Hey, got a question for you. Uh, I racing, um, a midget race coming up for a thousand dollars to win in January. Normally, it's kind of off season. Would you be interested in running that if you had a free entry? Yeah, possibly. Um, I am running the Chili Bowl again this year, so it all depends on that and uh, what we got going on in January. But, um, but yeah, I'm pumped up to go back to Chili Bowl this year. I'm a decent eye racer. I wouldn't say I'm very good. Um, if anything, I run, I run midgets probably more than anything on there. Just, I don't feel like the late models or the modifieds are very similar to what we actually race, but, uh, the midgets are pretty difficult on there and I, I enjoy them. All right. Well, listen, uh, Hey, thank you for your time, Nick. We want you to thank your sponsors on finish line and always appreciate you being on bud. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. We already got the car loaded up here, so um, we're ready to go already. Didn't really get to do much maintenance on it. We, we got a full shop of car, uh, cars right now. Um, but, yeah, I can't thank everybody enough that, that helps me uh, on the Scott deal, the Dry Dean, g and Oil Field Services, um, Hot Rod Septic, everybody that does, you know, everything for that, Scott and Cody. Um, my modified program, Fox Shocks, Willie's Carburetors, 
um, Hoosier Tire, Midwest, uh, Algar Performance Parts, Jerovich Shock Services, uh, Bassett Racing Wheel, FK uh, Rod Ends, um, everybody that helps me, all my product sponsors, Weir's Machines, a big supporter of mine. Um, you know, I can't, I couldn't do this without all them and, and all the fans that, uh, buy merchandise and, and, uh, come see me after the races and stuff. I, I really enjoy them guys. You, you, you hear, you hear the work going on in the background on the race car, yeah. the elite chassis as well. Yeah, they're, it's always uh, cool, man. We got about five cars in the shop right now on the floor. I got one at the powder coater and I, I don't know if anybody's seen the pictures. I mean, I ain't got, but you know, a two car garage basically. So we're pretty stuffed in there. Hey, one more question, and we'll let you go. What is what does it mean driving for Scott Bloomquist? You mentioned that earlier, uh, just having the saying that this is probably one of the greatest opportunities ever. But what has Scott Bloomquist done for you, and to try to make you a better race car driver, not just with your accolades and successes in the modifieds, but moving up into the supers? Yeah, so we we talk about it a lot. Like we drive really similar, um, and that's why his cars fit my style so well. Um, and I feel like I've been able to just jump in it and go good right off the bat. But, um, the biggest thing is not only just chassis setup wise, uh, tires, he's super smart with tires, you know, the best, the best there is as far as tires in the late model game. So, um, just learning from him on all that. And then the driving aspect of it, you know, um, the late model drives quite a bit different than the modified does, but, um, he's just you know he's the best he's won everything there is to win five times it seems like so um you know he's always got pointers like even last night he was at 411 doing tires for me and and helping us and stuff and he he was sitting in the infield pretty much the whole night uh when i was on the racetrack to be able to wash the car and tell me what i was doing wrong um and stuff like that so he's made a lot of laps around 411 uh like his pointers last night was to you know blow up my entry of one and two there because um it seems like it wants to wash you up the racetrack there. And so just try and slow your entry up to be able to drive down the hill off the corner. So just small stuff like that. He's uh, very good with watching the race car and, and looking at it and seeing what we need to do uh, to make the car better or me better. Well, Nick, safe travels to the Dirt Track World Championship for the Modified. Starts tomorrow night with preliminaries, the big race on Friday night. And, of course, uh, 100000 win for the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. We'll talk about that with Bob Donor in our final segment. But thank you for being on, and uh, be safe traveling on the road, and thank you for what you do in the industry with the Elite Chassis. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Not a problem. Nick Hoffman, the thrill, originally from St. Louis, Missouri, now from Mooresville, North Carolina, Race City, USA. You hear the work that uh, goes on there. And, of course, uh, he joins us on finish line uh, just a few moments ago. So uh, This is finish line. And there is he gone now. Okay, he froze up there for a second. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back. For those that are tuning into the program, uh, we are uh, awaiting uh, Zach Dome. Zach Dome is our next guest on the program, and uh, we're trying to get a hold of him. We might, you know, I, I hate to say this, we might have to do old school. We might have to just do this via phone call. Uh, seriously, um, so I'm not. Uh, sure what we'll do here i'm gonna try to get a hold of him or um try to text him here to see if we can get him um he, he you are this is your time so uh yeah so this is what we're gonna do um we're gonna thank uh, another round of sponsors and uh if not we'll go right into bob dillner uh coming up next to talk about the winchester 400 lucas oil and well, you know, Bob's a broadcaster like I am, so he loves to talk. And um, uh, trying to get Zach Dome on. Zach Dome at Across Lanes, West Virginia, winner of the Butterball at Richmond Raceway in Richmond, Kentucky. Um, of course, um, trying to get him lined up. Uh, he might not be familiar with the whole Zooming call or the our, our communications way. Uh, if there is any technical issues, we'll try to take care of him. So we'll uh, take a break. We'll do our sponsors again. We'll try to get a hold of Zach. And if we can't get Zach, we will move into talking Winchester 400 Lucas Oil with Bob Dillner. So do not go anywhere. More finish line when we return on Fox Sports Radio, iHeartRadio, Sports, Community Radio Network. And thanks to LSR TV Productions, you're watching live via YouTube. 
CrateInsider.com is your one source for crate racing tech and more. Whether you currently race with a crate engine or you are thinking about getting into the sport, our website has what you need. CrateInsider.com has tech videos, interviews with experts, and the best products in the industry. Dyno tested and proven, so we know they are the best products for crate engines. Visit CrateInsider.com today to get on the fast track to victory lane. If you have not ordered at DirtCarLift.com in the motorsports racing world, you are absolutely way behind. But if you are an existing customer of the Dirt Car Lift product, you already know about why they use the concept of stop jacking and start lifting. DirtCarLift.com helps make things very easier in the pit area. Whether you need to change a flat tire, make a shock or spring adjustment, DirtCarLift.com can get all four sides up immediately than having to go around from side to side to car to car. By the way, they have a special package and price for existing customers with a few changes to make your life a little easier. Give them a call at DirtCarLift.com today. Call them up again at 770-898-3907. 770-898-3907. And find out why the concept is true to stop jacking and start lifting with DirtCarLift.com at the races today. Watching her father, Lee McAllister, race dirt late models and asphalt late models to the great career he had in the Southeast. Tanya McAllister is building her legacy with helping drivers young and old, boys and girls, building up their career in advancement in the great career of motorsports and also other stick and ball sports from baseball to basketball and football. Her motto, see you at the winner's circle. Tanya McAllister does just that with MPM. Let me tell you about the focus that is McAllister Precision Marketing, MPM. They assist up-and-coming race car drivers with career advancement and promotion. We also provide companies with a strategic plan for their sales and marketing needs, as well as race car with race teams to secure sponsorships, but to build ongoing partnerships with sponsors as well. Services include assisting with career advancement, promoting drivers and businesses, working with development teams, and also for helping the place of upcoming drivers, assisting drivers with seeking marketing, partners and sponsorship, and so much more. Bottom line, let Tanya McAllister and MarketWithMPM.com get you into the winner's circle. Contact Tanya McAllister today at 803-361-6199 or visit them online at MarketWithMPM.com. Once again, that's MarketWithMPM.com. Tanya McAllister would love to see you soon in the winner's circle. Hey, welcome back to Finish Line. Wesley Outland here with you. Hope you're doing well on this Wednesday, October 13th. For those that are watching and listening, of course, uh, the podcasts are available as soon as we go live off the air. We are going to go back to the line, and joining us now is the winner of the Butterball. He is also uh, the driver out of Cross Lanes, West Virginia, and that is my buddy, the Dolmanator, Zach Dolm. Zach, I'll do it again, buddy. Take your Take your camera. See where it's like this right now? Tilt it for me. Make your screen bigger. There you go. <laughs> and, and there you go. There you go. Welcome to finish line, bud. Your phone's blowing up. You got a lot going on in your life. <laughs> yeah, that's the shop phone ringing. I'm, I was working there. I almost missed it. My bad. It's okay. We're probably going to have to cut your segment to about probably only nine minutes because we got Bob Dillner at 1240 Eastern. We got a very strict schedule we yeah. got to follow. Hard to believe we've already been 90 minutes on the air. But, uh, Zach, man, Butterball, big win. You've won the prestigious races Brandon, in the past. Office, please. You, Brandon. Somebody's getting in trouble at the office. That's all I know. <laughs> Somebody. It's my bad. Uh, so, no, no, Zach, uh, listen, bud. Um, You've won the preliminaries. You've won the the Hall of Fame race. You've won the the qualifiers. Uh, what did it mean to win the Butterball finally on Saturday night? It was awesome, man. I've, I feel like I've ran up front in that race a lot, and I, I've ran up front at Richmond a lot. You know, every year we win a couple big races there, decent paying races, and I think, man, maybe this is the year we'll win the big one and uh, 
it finally happened. So I'm just I'm just tickled. It, it was a pretty good weekend too. Like the there was some weather, so that I was worried it's going to get rough, and I was thinking that would be more of a reason why I might not finally win it this year. But it, everything went good. We qualified good and won the heat and got the lead early, and uh, it was a pretty stress free race. And, and by the way, uh, Zach Dome is at his his shop, Dome Cycles, on in Cross Lanes, West Virginia, like literally just outside of Charleston, uh, working your way up there to uh, to to the Wild and Wonderful State, and uh, and so he's working. Uh, you know, all these guys. You saw Nick Hoffman talking about he was working. Burt Myers is working. All of these drivers that fans look up to, young and old. Zach, you guys are chasing your dreams on a full-time basis. And in doing so, you're working at the, you know, working your job. Yeah. I mean, most of the, most of your racers out there, that's how they are. I mean, there's a select few that get to, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure even the ones that only form M comes racing, they ain't just sitting at home doing nothing, but you know, that's, that's the way it is. The most, uh, there's a lot of them that's just, professional racers but not not very many of them ever make it to that point and uh i'm pretty happy with just the way this is you know i like being able to work through the week and go race that's the cool thing about dirt racing you know you could be a just a regular guy through the week and you can go beat the professionals on the weekend hey coming up is bob dillner and we're going to talk about the dirt track world championship but as you being a driver getting ready you got a big win last week at the Butterball, twenty thousand fifty nine dollars to win, and now a shot at a hundred grand in Carl Short's uh, Dirt Track World Championship at Portsmouth. What's your thoughts going into that race uh, starting tomorrow night for practice? Well, we had a maybe the best shot I ever might ever have at it last year. I got to the outside of Shepherd for the lead and about halfway, and it was starting to take rubber and a. Uh, I think I was a couple laps too short. Maybe if I could got there a little earlier, I might have cleared him and been able to get down in front of him. But then I just kept trying and getting hung out on restarts and ended up back around six. But uh, hopefully a, a weekend about like that. You know, I mean, really going to a race like that, you just want to get in the show first, and then you got a hundred laps. You know, if you're good enough, you can start twentieth and get to the front. So hopefully we can just make the race and. And from there, uh, just have a, a race where nothing goes wrong. We should be able to go forward a little bit. I don't know how far, but just making the show and running top 10 in a race like that should be pretty good. You know, I, I don't want to bring up a sore subject, but, uh, you know, you had such a great friendship with Jackie Boggs, and we know he passed away last year uh, around October, November. Um, Jackie Boggs was a – you know, not just a friend, but mentor in your career. And of course, uh, he won the Butterball before, uh, you've ran paint schemes in his homage and memory. Um, you know, for so many races behind Mike Marler or behind these national guys, uh, to win the Butterball, uh, what did that mean to you to add that to your trophy case? And of course, uh, carrying on a, a legacy that Jackie Boggs, a good friend meant to you and your, his career and your career. Yeah, it's a, there's a lot of a lot of big guys have won that race really that I didn't even under, realize. Uh, Jimmy Owens has won it a couple times, but uh, oh yeah, so that's a you always like winning races like that. That a lot of good guys have won, uh, but you know any race I can win that Jackie Boggs won will mean something to me going forward. He taught me way more about racing and race cars than anybody else I ever met. Uh, like just how to do your tire, how to prepare. Like he, he did it right on not a lot of money. He used to always say, Tim Dome's racing on a quarter. These other guys are racing on a dollar and Jackie Boggs racing on a dime. But uh, that, that was about the truth. But like he, he didn't go, he went everywhere he ever went. He went to win. He was serious about it. And, uh, and he, he taught me a lot. And he, he could have fun. You know, I had a lot of fun with him too. So I miss him. Yeah. Yes, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, again, uh, a, a few more minutes with Zach Dome. Bob Dillner is coming up, and Zach Dome is at Dome Cycles. So, uh, free publicity there for his business. Uh, of course, Tim Dome, you think of uh, you think of the showstopper, Tim Dome, and, of course, the Dominator. That's what I call him. 
Zach Dome, of course, big winner of the Butterball. Uh, Zach, man, before we let you go, uh, maybe a couple more questions. What's what's the plans for the rest of the year? Obviously, uh, you know, I know Veronica's got the baby. Life is good. You're you're having fun traveling. I know you got the DTWC this weekend. Are we going to see you at the World Finals? Are you going to the World Short Track Championship? Are you going to the National 100, the Blue Gray 100? What more big races will we see Zach Dome at? I don't know. I need to I need to find something to go to. Um, that deal at Charlotte, I've been to that before, but uh, you know we try to make it financially make sense. And that one's just that. There's all kinds of competition there, and a payout. It's a tough race to make, and honestly, I'm gonna skip that one. I'm gonna go to uh, Sonoya for that fifty thousand they're gonna have. Oh yeah, Sonoya um, Raceway. But uh, other than that, I'm not real sure. R- Richmond, if they have that uh, that ten thousand there in a couple weeks at the end of October, I'll go to it and Sonoya. But other than that, I'm I'm not real sure. We'll just have to watch the weather and see what's going on. And don't like to drive too far, but I'm gonna have to drive here later in the year to do some racing. So might see us somewhere. Not real sure yet. For sure. Well, listen, Zach, uh, thank you so much for uh, connecting to us. It sounds like you got a busy day at work. Appreciate you being on finish line. Before I do let you go, man, thank your sponsors and congratulations on winning the Butterball. Thank you, man. Uh, yeah, my dad, t- Tim Dome, Dome Cycles, you know, we couldn't do it without this place. Uh, Tim Short, he's uh, been a big help this year. Tim Short Automotive down in Kentucky. Uh, anybody needs any cars? vehicles look at look him up he's got a couple different dealerships um Dwayne and jennifer daggett uh poskies octane hoosier uh vic hill longhorn bill steen uh keith burner accuforce uh renegade fuel um just everybody that helps us so we're fortunate enough to have a decent bit of help these days and we definitely couldn't do it without any of them well, thank you for your time being on finish line, buddy. We'll let you get back to work, and good luck at the Dirt Track World Championship this weekend. All right. See you, Wesley. Thanks. The Dominator, Zach Dome, of the 2021 Butterball Champion, joining us here on finish line at Richmond Raceway. This is finish line. Well, me and producer Charles Wooten were talking in my ear, and he said, man, it's hard to believe how fast this show really, really goes by, but it really is. We are down to our final guest of the afternoon. Let's get him on the program right now. There's a lot of great things that we can talk about. We can talk about the Arca Racing Series. We can talk about the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. We can also talk about the Run for the Rifle that is this weekend, the 50th run into the Lucas Oil Winchester 400, powered by Jags, one of the esteemed veteran broadcasters and somebody that I've come to know as a friend is on the program now, Bob Dillner. Bob, welcome to Finish Line. We got a lot to talk about here. <laughs> yeah, we do. There's a ton going on. Even today at Winchester Speedway, uh, we're all here working, digging hard, getting ready for the Lucas Oil Winchester 400 presented by Jags. Uh, uh, we got the place looking pretty good, uh, but never satisfied. Uh, a lot of people doing a lot of work and uh, overcoming a lot of odds, too, because remember, this facility was built in 1914. So a lot of old stuff here at this legendary racetrack. A lot of history, a lot of fun, a lot of love at Winchester. I always say they don't race them anywhere in the world like they do at Winchester Speedway for sure. And I had the privilege a couple of years ago to just experience what it's like to watch those cars climb the high banks. And it's it's truly a sight uh, for sure. If you can put it in your bucket list plans to be at Winchester Speedway in Indiana this weekend for the 50th uh, Winchester 400, please do it. Nothing compares to being live. But, Bob, if you can't be there live, something that's not been done in over a decade, the Winchester 400 will be on national television on the MAV-TV Motorsports Network. Talk about it. Yeah, we're real excited about that. That just came about a few weeks ago, actually, uh, when, uh, you know, the the company that I work for, Lucas Oil, they asked me, hey, who's doing the stuff at Winchester next year? And I said, I don't know. Um, They said, you don't have a streaming partner? I said, no, we don't have a streaming partner. And they said, well, how about we do one better than that? Let's put it live on national television. And I said, sure, let's do it. 
And I think it's great because uh, it gives the drivers and the sponsors uh, so much more notoriety and exposure. Um, and we're able to bring that here between the partnership between uh, Lucas Oil, Mav TV, and Winchester Speedway. So we're really proud of that. I mean, and, and think about it. Not only will it give exposure to all the people that are competing and the fans and the sponsors that are all here, um, but this helps spread the love of short track racing. And, and it really gets people to know what this special type of racing is all about because this will be worldwide. Uh, the first nationally televised super late model race since in the early 2000s with the All-American 400 at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. I think that's a really big accomplishment um, and hopefully a step in the right direction. Uh, there's a lot of things that I'd love to do and uh, some of our staff here would love to do with super late model racing in the future with a possible national tour. Um, but, you know, step by step, uh, we have to accomplish things. And this is a great first step to be able to do that. And so everybody that has Mav TV, um, Direct TV is 214, uh, Hulu, YouTube TV, uh, many cable uh, outlets uh, across the nation. Um, it, it's very widespread, uh, 40 million households. So I, I think, you know, a lot of people will have the chance to watch. It'll also be live on Mav TV Plus. Uh, not only on Sunday, but on Friday and Saturday with all the racing festivities as well. So we're real, real proud of that. But as you said, it doesn't replace um, the feeling of being here and seeing the uh, 36, 37 degree banking here. Uh, at one point it was 47 degrees. <laughs> and then they realized that they needed to cut it down through the, the uh, test of time. So, uh, so many cool stories here at Winchester. It's such a legendary racetrack, and uh, I'm just real proud uh, to be just a small part of it in managing the facility with our, our entire team here. Um, you know, I'm off doing TV stuff, and I'll be off doing TV stuff this weekend, but we'll have uh, uh, staff here that'll be able to manage everything from modifieds and compacts with the Forest Compact Touring Series and Pro Late Model Street Stocks and Sportsmen uh, leading up to that big Super Late Model Dance, some of the crown jewels of Super Late Model Racing, no matter what some people say, um, you know, in Super Late Model Racing around America. And we're real proud to be able to have that with Lucas Oil and Jegs on board to help make that happen this year. Bob Dillner again joining us here as our final guest on Finish Line. Of course, you can follow him at Bob Dillner on Twitter. Uh, and Bob, you mentioned it just a few moments ago. Uh, a full-time broadcaster, you have Lucas Oil Productions, you have Mav TV, you have Mav TV Plus. You have so many obligations of things you do. ARCA, um, you know, pretty much we know Ty Gibbs has locked up the national championship for ARCA. Um, there's one race remaining at Kansas coming up this weekend. Uh, but you have the Dirt Track World Championship. We know that, uh, of course, um, the, the, the Donald Bratcher team of Tim, Team Act Tim McCready has won the championship. $100,000 is on the line with Carl Short's prestigious event at Portsmouth. How do you... Uh, get get how do you get that hat on of going from dirt late models to getting in the booth to doing Winchester to promoting Winchester obviously you got Claire and Tiffany and so many people there in the office to help you out that you mentioned but then you take that hat from going from the dirt broadcast world to then preparing to do the Winchester 400 on Sunday no sleep, first of all, uh, or at least uh, very little sleep, especially with all the worries that you have in promoting a race and managing one and uh, making sure that we're, you know, crossing our T's and dotting our I's. So there's there's so much work to be done there that honestly, when I leave here and I go to Portsmouth Raceway Park for Carl Short's uh, Dirt Track World Championship on Saturday, actually, I'll leave here on Friday to head over. Um, it, it's easier. <laughs> Uh, I have a passion for dirt late model racing, absolutely fell in love with it um, you know, years ago in, in the land of Freddie Smith and Jeff Purvis and Rodney Combs, and I just didn't grow up around it. So I was one of those that would love it for and whether it was seeing it on television or seeing it in the trade papers. And I used to, you know, cut out the pictures of, of Freddie Smith's Rodney Combs car, especially with those sail panels and the wedge bodies and put it up on my walls of my bedroom as a kid and my dad would get mad because i'd use all the masking tape that was in the garage and um he just fell in love with it so when i got the opportunity to uh to do that um you know almost 10 years ago now um i jumped at it and um it, it just the passion continues and uh the dirt track world championship 
you know, this weekend will be unbelievable because it has such a pitch, picturesque scene, you know, with the bridge on the Seattle and the Ohio River there um, with the fall foliage of the, the mountaintop just behind it and the packed grandstands. Um, this is a special event and one that honestly, I don't think doesn't get enough credit for what it does. I mean, think about it. This is now seven years of $100,000 to the winner. That's crazy. Uh, the first time it was $100,000 was in 2015. That was my first year with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. And I've been going ever since. And the stories, the championship battles, the, you know, the what we see out of Brandon Shepard, who has won four now, trying to tie Freddie Smith for five overall wins, the most ever in the Dirt Track World Championship history. This year, this race is 41 years old now, and that seems unbelievable. But the names, you know, starting out with Jim Dunn that have graced Victory Lane there, just show you how prestigious it is. And um, I think everybody talks about the world and the dream and the Show Me 100 and races like that. You just talked to uh, Zach Dome, you know, in terms of the Butterball. That's a big race as well. But I think the Dirt Track World Championship is like that pinnacle of the end of the season. Yes, you got the world finals at the Charlotte Motor Speedway dirt track, but this really says, hey, the season has, has you know, culminated. We might have a couple more races throughout the end of the year, but this is $100,000. This is the big deal. This is the change of the season with the fall colors and, and the, you know, you, you, all the campfire smoke and the thousands of people that come and the midway that's packed. This is a carnival-like atmosphere at the Dirt Track World Championship. And I'm just proud to be a very small part of that too uh, by announcing not only for uh, MAV TV and MAV TV Plus with the live coverage, uh, but also uh, for all the that are in a 10 Portsmouth Raceway Park. It's just so much fun uh, to be part of that and uh, to hang out with James Essex. And and by the way, if you want to know more about the history of the first ever uh, Jim Dunn race that was won at the Dirt Track World Championship, uh, your brother Matthew Dillner is a part of Dirty Mo Media and uh, Dell Earnhardt Jr. and Lost Speedway Season 2. Get it on Peacock or get it on uh, your NBC app store. And uh, I encourage you, uh, Carl Short's on there. There's a lot of historians on there. And it talks about the history of the Dirt Track World Championship and what it is about. And uh, Carl was even said, uh, Bob, he based it off a of NASCAR. He based it off a of Darlington Raceway in the Southern 500 and what it paid back in the day. And that's what he said. Well, if we can do this for pavement racing, and they're going to run 500 miles. I want to do this for a simple dirt race in Pennsboro, West Virginia. And in doing so, it has culminated to what it is now for the 41st edition this uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in Portsmouth, Ohio. Yeah, it's really neat. I mean, Scott Bloomquist, what is he, like a three-time winner of this event, I believe. I was doing some of my notes last night. Um, you know, our tech director of the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, Steve Francis, is a former winner. But again, my idol, uh, Freddie Smith, uh, you know, he's five times. Brandon Shepard could meet that. And, you know, I think Brandon's got to be the odds on favorite. Uh, but then if you look at a guy like Zach Dome, he could really steal the spotlight. I think he's got three top five finishes in the last five years in the Dirt Track World Championship. Always runs well at Portsmouth, Ra Portsmouth Raceway Park. And then you get a guy like, you know, Jonathan Davenport, who's coming off of two consecutive Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series wins, a second place run in the uh, Floating Night in America event uh, this, this week. I think he's got a little momentum on his side. And there's a lot said about momentum. I mean, Jonathan Davenport, I think, has only finished in the top five one track world championship. But he's a guy that I think a lot of people pick for one of the top two or three favorites to win uh, because I think he and that Lance Landers team uh, overcoming and so forth, you know, uh, that, that Jonathan did. I, I think they're just like, you know, raring to go right now. And uh, they have the most wins on the Lucas Oil Elite Model Dirt Series this year, despite not winning the championship. So I think he's uh, one of those guys to keep an eye on this weekend at Portsmouth. Bob, do, do, do I hear the sound of race cars around Winchester right now? Do I hear vroom, vroom, vroom? <laughs> you do. You hear some super late models, pro late model. Mandy Chick is out there. Um, you know, uh, I've been, I've been uh, hanging up banners, uh, cleaning up the midway, mowing the grass and, 
uh, and repairing some other things that really didn't need to be repaired uh, until recently. So that's what I've been doing here today. So I don't even know who's really officially out in the racetrack. Maybe Claire can hand me a note or something here because uh, I hear them and they're awesome sounding. And there's nothing like well, I just thought you were just going to go AWOL and pick up the camera and just take off outside <laughs> and show us the racetrack of what's going on out well, there. You know, you, well, listen, you, you know how rural like I am. <laughs> you know how rural it is out here. Honestly, I don't, I don't think to uh, get the signal out there. Uh, look at that. We have the defending yes, champion. I, I just got handed a note. Carson Hosovar out on the track today. Uh, Smith, perennial favorite in the pro late models, as well as when he gets behind on the wheel of a super late model and mandy chick the racer so they've been testing all week i think steven assey is going to be rolling through here this afternoon as well to do a little testing as well and steven assey dominated the race leading 392 laps out of 400 two years ago when you were here um, we appreciate you yes. coming up with us uh, that year and helping us out with a lot of different things even through the old speed 51 stuff when i was involved over there but um we're, i mean listen we got we got a carnival-like atmosphere. Um, we got like nine food vendors with lights and tenderloins and sugar shack and fried veneers and all sorts of so. Wesley, this race would be right up your alley. Get me hungry. You're getting me hungry right now. You're getting me hungry. Look at that belly, baby. Hey, hey, Bob. <laughs> Bob, I, I got something else we want to talk about. This is the 50th running of the winchester 400 this this uh this weekend and one of the things that was been promoted the last month or so is 50 cars fifty thousand dollars to win what is the super late model car count like what are the numbers right now do you feel like you can reach that amount to pay fifty thousand to win no i we cannot honestly reach that amount and the honest thing is, is there's a couple of contributing factors there first of all there's a bunch of uh, uh car drivers that are a little bit chicken a little bit afraid to come here to just and go on banks and the high speeds they're just afraid bottom line um there's others that would like to be here uh but because of the pandemic and and you know part shortages and labor shortages uh, they just can't be here um so a combination of those two factors i think um, are the reason why we won't achieve that 50 car count. Um, you know, we'll have uh, the cars here and some fine names for sure, but that's the difference between dirt late model racing and pavement racing. Uh, pavement racing, you know, is just uh, <laughs> gotten soft, honestly. Um, and those guys are not the warriors that we see over on the dirt side. Um, so uh, I think Winchester racetrack, it's revered, but it's feared as well. And I think uh, the whole pandemic with getting people to work, even some people like Bubba Pollard have told me, dude, I, I can't come because I got to work my regular job and I don't have time to go racing. Um, so he's even cut back on his schedule a bunch. But we have big names here. We're excited for the weekend. Uh, 50 years um, feet for the Lucas Oil Winchester 400. Uh, Bob Seneker, the seven time race winner, uh, more than anybody else, sees Grace Victory Lane here at Winchester in the 400. He'll be our Grand Marshal. Uh, Dave Argerbright, it will be announced, will give the command to fire engines. Uh, he's stepping away from full time uh, on the road, pit reporting like he's done for years, and he's such an accomplished person within the motorsports industry. So we're proud to have him. Sure. Our mayor will be here. There's so many other people, Wesley, that will be here as well. This will be uh, an unbelievable event. The atmosphere will be electric. Uh, there's going to be 200 uh, race cars here. Uh, the Voris Compact Touring Series, the modified entire event on the day. Um, and listen, if peeking at the weather forecast, we're already, uh, you know, taking some opportunity to look at schedules. We'll fit everything in no matter what mother nature throws at us. And, uh, we've already got alternative and revised schedules lined up just in case, uh, we do have some weather possibly rolling in on Friday, but we'll make those, make those changes as we need to. And, uh, we'll be set for a big weekend of racing here at Winchester. Always have uh, plan A, B, C, and D, and even E in, in coordinates, just in case, for sure. Uh, Bob, what is it like from you being a broadcaster to take it on this role of being a track promoter? You know, a lot of people might not remember, but we were all working together. You were going to get Gresham Motorsports Park and bring that back to life, and then COVID and things changed all of that. And, I mean, even you put your name in the ring to try so hard to even try to make that happen until it was just – 
exhausted, couldn't do it anymore. Then you help promote the the Cherokee Invitational when when you know Cherokee Speedway was the first dirt track probably in the country that got back open again. We put it on MAV TV, Short Track America. You put it on uh, Speed Fifty One TV. You put it on. Uh, you help that event. You help be a make that be a big race with Scott Childress and the promoters. And then you've done what you're doing at, at Winchester. You've helped promote other races, other series events. What's it like taking that role of being a broadcaster and taking your ideas and not only that, but also having the helm of now trying to run a racetrack as a stork as Winchester Speedway? It's exhausting. Honestly, uh, there's just so much work and some facilities are easier to work at than others. This one is a challenge at Winchester because everything is so old. Uh, I tell the story about last year um, or earlier this year, you know, the toilets were having some trouble. They were getting backed up and I said, well, let, let's get up here, right? And, um, you know, I'm like, wonder when that last time, you know, the, uh, you know, what was pumped and the guy rolls in and he goes, you know, I haven't been here in a long time. I says, I was one it's been and he goes i checked my records and this is the only person to pump in town here in rural america indiana is i haven't been here in 21 years uh -oh. i said well that's a lot of legendary poop there ain't her so <laughs> we got it pumped everything's working good uh but man it's just um it's a challenge um you know you surround yourself with a bunch of good people and we have good people here with you know chris you know and claire and and, and, and Tiffany and, and Jim and everybody uh, that do a lot of work here. Um, but, you know, this is not going to just be it for us. We're looking at uh, other things in the future. And uh, with our team, um, you know, we plan on continuing everything uh, with Winchester. But I think you learn. Um, and it is very satisfying when you get through the weekend and that big race finally gets green and you look and you go, wow, we were accomplished something very important. And a lot of people, there's a lot of keyboard warriors out there, man. They are just absolutely out of control and quite honestly, stupid. Um, they don't understand what, what goes in these track. They don't understand the obstacles with uh, an older facility or, you know, financial, whatever it may be. Uh, but they like to get in there and, and chime on social media. And, um, you know, we really appreciate the people that come out and, and talk nice and see the good things. I always said, and this is thing with running the racetrack or event doesn't make a difference what it is you know the only way you're going to know how to do the right things is do a lot of wrong things first and we've done both here at winchester speedway and uh, we'll continue to do so but if you stay stagnant um, man you know people just sit there and whine and complain all the time and about certain things in short track racing the only way you're going to improve and they need to be improved because there's nothing better than short track racing is try to improve it. Um, and, and that's what we're trying to do in no matter what we do, whether it's here at Winchester Speedway, uh, whether it was going to be at Gresham Motorsports Park until that place uh, um, got sold for a while and then the sale, sale fell through. Um, but, you know, we're going to continue to do things and make things prettier, make things more attractive family friendly and, and and make the racing as as good as it can be in the times that we're in it's just a lot different than it was and people go oh well, i remember the winchester 400 back in 1982 and it was awesome and it's still awesome it's just different times have changed wasn't technology even born has in changed. people have changed <laughs> yeah you weren't born dang i thought you were as old as me Oh, no, no, don't even go there. <laughs> 38, 38 and hold it as uh, somebody told me the other day. Oh, uh, no. listen, you better be, you better invite me to your 40th birthday party. We're going to have a time. We, yes, always. You always have. You're going to be the MC for sure, because I'll be too. I'll oh, be, no, no, be MC. I just want to have fun. <laughs> well, you know that I can get down. You know we can do the giddy up challenge and anything else you need me to do in front of the Culver's parking lot in Indiana. So. <laughs> yes, that was after the 20, 2019 uh, Winchester 400. But 2018 hey, Winchester you, 400, yep. It was 2019, but that's all right. Um, never let facts get in the way of the yes, story. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I will tell you that, Wesley, I'm just 
you know, my wife sometimes wants to kill me uh, because of some of the things that I take on. Uh, but honestly, you know, <laughs> I, I do it not for the money because you can ask uh, Tina who takes care of the money. There ain't no money the owner's got in his pocket here uh, from Winchester Speed with far. Um, but, you know, we try to make improvements and, and we, listen, we save this racetrack a year and a half. It was going to shut down, whether it was going to shut down permanently or just it was going to shut down and, and Charlie said, Hey, can you come in and help me? And we did. And we are doing what we think are good things. Um, we'll continue to make improvements, continue to listen to people. Some people, we won't take their suggestions. Some people we will, uh, but we're going to do the right thing for the event, the community, the fans and the racers um, and try to grow things and anything that we do. And, and my, my love, she puts up with me and, uh, takes care of our kids and just works so hard. But, um, you know, it is, uh, you know, a very uh, trying time uh, with some things, but uh, we're going to prevent and we're excited about this weekend and things to come here. We got going on. I tell you what, I work for a hell of a company in Lucas Oil and Mav TV. Um, they, they are so supportive of everything that we do and they really care about racing. Uh, Forrest you know, just loves racing Morgan and everybody there. And I believe that Lucas Oil is becoming the new Winston in terms of that brand being so revered and everybody wanting to wear that Lucas Oil, you know, jacket or shirt or hat or whatever. Um, he doesn't have to do this. He, he puts so much money, uh, speaking of Forrest, into this. Um, and yes, it's an advertising mechanism for him. But at the same time, there's other advertising mechanisms that he can he can do. And he loves racing so much uh, that he does this and he does it for a reason. And uh, we really appreciate and I love, you know, working for them. It's been such a, a blessing. Uh, I never change anything about what I've done in my career, the things that I've, you know, done, uh, what I've owned or, you know, uh, who I've worked for. At the same time, um, myself, my family, we're very happy to be here in Indiana and excited to be doing what we're doing. And, of course, you think of what he has also done with ASA. And Winchester was always big with ASA and the Winchester 400 back in the day. Uh, I just uh, I, I find it cool sometimes just uh, when I'm bored going on YouTube and going to Winchester 400 and looking at some old TNN broadcasts of some of the things you've done back in the day. And, uh, of course, uh, you know, going to do it again on MAV TV this Sunday. Bob, in closing, let everybody know about ticket prices and let everybody know that also – the Winchester 400, though it's the humdinger of the Winchester facility, uh, it is not the final race of the season. You still got another race coming up on Halloween weekend, which will officially close out the year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got this weekend. Tickets are available uh, for each and every day. Uh, reserve seats are getting close to being sold out. So go to winchesterspeedway.com forward slash tickets if you want to get those tickets. Uh, the tickets will shut down tomorrow at some point, either noon or five o'clock. So uh, if you have that opportunity to get the tickets or just show up and there will be tickets available all weekend long, trackside parking, you name it, for the Lucas R. Winter 100 presented by Jags. And then the Lucas Oil Sammy Session Snowball is Sprint Car, payment Sprint Cars on the track on October 30th. But man, I, I got a big weekend, man. And Wesley, I got to say, it's going to be really interesting because the last time the Winchester 400 was live on national television, I, I believe was 2001 or two. Okay. And I was in the booth with Buddy wow. Baker and we were live on the TNN network and uh, Gary St. Amont, the two time winner of the Winchester 400 won that race. Well, ironically now back on live television on Mav TV with the Lucas R. Winchester 400, Gary St. Amont will be my colleague in the booth for the race on Sunday and Jim Trado will be on pit road. So live national television on Sunday, but the night before I'll be in Portsmouth, Ohio, live national television with the dirt track championship at Portsmouth raceway park for the Lucas Oil elite model dirt series. And I close out my Mav TV on air stuff next weekend, the Arkham Menard series finale, October 23rd at Kansas speedway. Looking forward to going out there. we got some big announcements uh, during that broadcast and, uh, Mark Gundrum will give all of ours. Um, he's retiring, so we're going to be partying big time after that event at Kansas Speedway. 
Bob, one more question and we'll let you go. I, I told everybody I was going to give you an extended segment that I gave the other guys for sure because we're commentators. Uh, and I wanted you to promote all of the things that are going on. And we appreciate you being on finish line. Uh, do you feel with doing this race on Mav TV? The Winchester 400. We think of the crown jewels. We think of Oxford. We think of Winchester. We think of the All-American. We think of the Snowball Derby, obviously. That's the big one. And do, do you feel that this, what you're doing, what Mav TV is doing, could possibly open the door for maybe more of these crown jewel or other big pavement late model races to possibly get some national TV exposure? I think so. I think so. You know, we're always open to uh, to listening to everything. You know, there's there's you know people that are higher up than me that make those decisions. But uh, I would welcome. You know, I, listen. Dirt pavement doesn't make a difference. Um, I, the objective is to put more live coverage of racing on Mav TV because live is where it's at. Um, from the linear television network uh, standpoint, that. That's what the plan is for 2022. And I think it's going to be really exciting to see more races like the Lucas Oil Winchester 400 on MAV TV. Um, so a lot of announcements, I'm sure, still to come. Um, but uh, we're just racing dudes, and, and um, we love racing, and that's what MAV TV is all about. Uh, you know, everybody's able to take over for the old speed network. And uh, I, I think uh, we're, we're – well on our way to doing that and i'm excited to see what's to come and and you know my my little part in it uh, will just be awesome well bob dillner thank you so much for taking your time to join us on finish line hope you have a great race at the 50th lucas oil winchester 400 presented by jags and uh we appreciate you being on to promote it and talk about it talk about lucas oil the dirt track world championships arca and so much more and as a as an ambassador to the sport. Thank you for all that you've done for so many decades. Hey, thank you so much. Appreciate you, Wesley. You got a passion. Like all right. Well, there's Bob Dillner. So we appreciate Bob Dillner joining us here on finish line. And uh, again, I think we lost him right there at the end, but uh, I, I, I think, you know, some of the video was glitching, cutting in, cutting out, but I think the audio kind of stayed and, and, and it just promotes what is so big coming up. And again, uh, first time 2001 uh, that, that, it's been on Mav TV or on national TV in general and the Winchester 400. And I want to say this, Q, you, we can cue up the closing music. I want to say this in closing. Just because it's on national TV on a platform does not diminish the idea of making the trip, whether you live in the Carolinas, whether you live up in the Northeast, the Midwest, if you can make the trip to Winchester Speedway, it is truly an experience unlike any other. I, Like Bob said, I got to go there back in 2019 uh, as part of the team. And um, it just watching those cars climb the high banks was just a thrill. To cross over into the tunnel under the track and hear the roar of the cars and then you're kind of like a nascar tunnel turn if you will going back up into the pits and seeing all the work that they did and to hear and watch the guys climbing the high banks it's truly the bravest of the brave uh pass through these gates it's at the main entrance of the speedway where the fans the haulers uh they never put the haulers in the pits they block it all off like they do the derby uh and for the snowball derby where you actually can see all the cars wherever you sit at um Make your plans. Watch it. Map TV, Map TV Plus, Dirt Track World Championship, ARCA, Bob Dillner, thank you. Other guests, including Brittany Zamora, Derek Griffith, Dick McCaskill, Burt Myers, Nick Hoffman, Zach Dome, and again, Bob Dillner. What a great, great show. For everybody on our Fox Sports Radio affiliates, iHeart Radio Sports, Community Radio Network, for LSR TV Productions and Rocket Media, for Jeff Stabdow and Charles Wooten in production, I'm Wesley Outland. We thank you for watching and listening to Finish Line. It's going to get bigger. It's going to get better. We hope you've enjoyed it, and we thank you for being a race fan. Remember, check us out every Wednesday. God bless you all, and thank you for watching and listening. 
Let me tell you about MPM. McAllister Precision Marketing. They can assist up and coming racers with career advancement, promotion, and assist in sponsorship procurement. MPM also has media and professional etiquette training. They work with premier driver development teams and limited late models to late models. And they also help the teams to make it up to the levels of KN, ARCA, Truck Series, and even NASCAR Xfinity. Contact Tanya McAllister today at McAllister Precision Marketing, 803 361 6199. Today, get on the board with MPM. CrateInsider.com is your one source for crate racing tech and more. Whether you currently race with a crate engine or you are thinking about getting into the sport, our website has what you need. CrateInsider.com has tech videos, interviews with experts, and the best products in the industry. Dyno tested and proven, so we know they are the best products for crate engines. Visit CrateInsider.com today to get on the fast track to victory lane. If you have not ordered at DirtCarLift.com in the motorsports racing world, you are absolutely way behind. But if you are an existing customer of the Dirt Car Lift product, you already know about why they use the concept of stop jacking and start lifting. DirtCarLift.com helps make things very easier in the pit area. Whether you need to change a flat tire, make a shock or spring adjustment, DirtCarLift.com can get all four sides up immediately than having to go around from side to side to car to car. By the way, they have a special package and price for existing customers with a few changes to make your life a little easier. Give them a call at DirtCarLift.com today. Call them up again at 770-898-3907. 770-898-3907. And find out why the concept is true to stop jacking and start lifting with DirtCarLift.com at the races today. This episode of is an exclusive production solely for the private, non-commercial use of our listening audience. Any publication, reproduction, transmission of the accounts without the express written consent or permission is restricted and prohibited. To hear this replay or other previous podcasts, download on iHeartRadio, iTunes Radio, and TuneIn. As always, this show is for you. Thank you for listening. 